tasty, tasty. Tasty, tasty. Tasty, tasty. Incredible. 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 Tasty, tasty. Tasty, tasty.
good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are guys, I hope you're having a really good Sunday. Um, today's an interesting one, because I have the football on my screen here, so I can watch the footy uh, whilst, uh, whilst we stream. Um, for those that you don't know, England is currently playing Spain in the uh, European um, Cup, which is kind of like, uh, you imagine the World Cup, but just for Europe and a couple of other teams. Um, so I have that one because it's the final today, so Americans think... Super Bowl, something like that. Is the mic mic really loud? Mic is clipping. Okay, let's uh, let's try turning that down a little bit. That should be better. Incredible. Let me know if that's better. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um. So yeah. So I'm watching the England game. Um. But anyway, it, that's one in the background, so I can see just if we win or anything else. <sighs> Perfect for some cam on England. Um. Yeah. Like I, I'm not going to show the game because I'll get banned off Twitch if I show it. It's clipping with it quieter. Uh, it shouldn't clip. It doesn't show that it's clipping here. Hmm. Hmm. Let me let me reduce the overall mic volume. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. That. How is that? Does that work better? That doesn't. That looks like it's not clipping at all. But you tell me, guys. You tell me. Um, Captain Reed got first. Congratulations, Captain. I appreciate that. Much better. Okay, cool. We'll leave it as that then. Preamp at max power. I don't have an amp, so yeah. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll go with that. Hopefully, it's better. Uh, Funky, thank you so much for being here. Perlin as well. Hey, Perlin, good to see you. Uh, Kevy's here. Uh, Babes is here as well. So is James. Uh, Rockets as well. Maybe yes. Alvi here's too. Anonymous Biker subscribed subscribe for 19 months. I actually have a couple of off stream. Uh, uh, subs as well to shout out so we'll do those in a second anonymous bike says good evening jay i hope you well thank you so much for the 19 months dude uh, also thank you to anonymous who gifted a tier one sub to perlin and exists 174763 as well for subscribing just before the stream as well so thank you very much for that guys uh jim is here as well uh dan joe is here too lazy keiko's here as well hey keiko good to see you joe to music subscribe for 13 months thank you very much he says tasty tasty it is tasty indeed which makes me realize i want coffee as well Mm. Alex Otos, thank you so much for the raid. I didn't even see that happen, but thank you so much for the raid, and thank you so much for guys being here. We've literally just started. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for being here, guys. We're giving away a Cycle 8 prototype today, and also building a Theseus 75. We'll also be taking a first look at GMK's new profile. This is an MT new. This is something different. Uh, and going through some other things as well. So please bear that in mind. I'll catch Incredible. up with all the stuff that's going to happen over the next few minutes. Uh, RL Keeps, thank you so much for the 18 months of subs as well. Barium says, what's good, folks? Uh, everything's good. Thank you. <laughs> Powership subscribed for six months as well. Um, Anarchy's here as well. So is I'm Eddie M. Yeah, apologies for the mic. I apologize. But, you know, we fixed it. We've got it sorted. We've got it sorted. You're right, Mike. It sounds like you're on Xbox Live. It doesn't usually sound like this. It should sound better now. Um, I think what... what what happens sometimes is the mic just, because I, I don't have any filters on the mic, because when I do a typing test, I want it to sound like the typing test. I don't want to add like a filter so you guys hear something different to what's actually happening. Um, so you hear every rattle and clack and everything else. And like, um, I know some streamers kind of like put a, like a filter on their mics to kind of get rid of that and turn down gain and noise suppression and everything else. You'll even hear the clock in the background tick over, which is just there when it ticks over. So yeah, I, I try to make the sound as natural as possible rather than adjust it but yeah glad we fixed that um can you turn the background music there too loud compared to the voice okay yeah we can do that the background music shouldn't be too loud but there we go incredible let's turn down as well um so 10 <clears> percent <throat> discount for each england goal maybe maybe um we could do like maybe we could do that because they aren't going to score more than like two okay Let's uh, let's do a discount code. If England score their first goal, we'll talk about a discount code, and we'll do ten percent up to a maximum of forty percent. Okay, so to a maximum of four England goals, we'll do ten percent per goal. Okay, so we'll, yeah, we'll do that. I like that idea. Ten percent discount on in-stock items for every goal England score. That's the discount code we'll give away today. Different from what I was going to do, but up to a maximum of forty percent. Uh, the CC should be working. Uh, yeah, CC shows that it's working. Yeah, oh, okay, it's on the stream now. I don't know why it wasn't on the stream before, but it is now. Okay, fixed. 
Um, so yeah, so we'll do that. We'll do a 10% discount for every goal that England score. It's currently nil-nil. Um, I have it up just at the side of me just here. So we'll do that. Um, so yeah, so what are we going to do today? We're going to do a few things. We First of all, we're going to give away a Cycle 8 keyboard. That's going to be really, really cool. And we're going to give that away on stream today. How are we going to do that? We're going to play marbles, but we're going to play marbles 10 times over the course of the stream. Okay. So I'm conscious that the ads are happening now, so we'll just wait for that to happen. Do it for gold difference. Spain go win a low, add 10%. Mm. Aim before Spain's a keyboard enthusiast and narrow it down. <laughs> we'll do 10% per one up until a maximum of 40%. Once the ad's are over as well, I'll uh, I'll talk about um, I'll talk about different things. Yeah, don't worry about the ads. I'm going to talk about it after the ads. Like, as soon as I finish. Oh, it tells me to finish now. Okay. So what we're going to do is to give away the Cycle 8, which I'll show you guys in a minute. It's at the side of me just here. We will do 10 different marbles races, which I've already pre-selected, and we'll do those spread out over the stream. And those will be a Grand Prix. So whoever wins the most points across all 10 races will win the keyboard. So think of it like a Formula One season or a NASCAR season where you get points per race. And sometimes you might have a DNF. Sometimes you might miss a race because you're not paying attention. All of those different types of things. Okay. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And that's how we're going to play it. And we'll have those spread throughout the stream. So we're going to do 10 races in total. And someone today will win and get shipped out a free cycle 8 we'll cover shipping we'll cover the cost of the keyboard all you guys will need to do is just pay any import duty if it's there when you get here so it would like when it gets to you like if you're in the eu you might have to pay a small amount of duties and taxes because we can't do that for um giveaway items unfortunately but yeah so that's what we're going to do we're going to do it for uh the cycle 8 and that's going to give around Will we fully unlap behind the safety car? Oh, dude, don't talk about safety cars, please. I'm still distraught from 2021 on that. Um, so, yeah, so 10 marbles races over the course of the whole stream. The more races you win, the more chance you have of winning. Um, and the most points across 10 races, whoever that is, the number one person that will win at the Cycle 8 prototype we built last week, which is pretty cool, right? Cycle 8 prototype, pretty cool. As well as that, we're going to be building the Theseus 75 today, which, if you haven't Incredible. seen it, it's kind of like the daddy of 75 splits right now, as far as I'm concerned. It looks phenomenal, and I'm really excited to see which colour we've got, because I haven't even opened the board yet. Um, so we're going to build the Theseus 75. You guys will get to see it. Um, I was going to do a thing where you guys could pick the switches. Unfortunately, I don't have enough lube to film switches for more than one keyboard, um, like different types. I only have one pack of alpacas, which are lubed and filmed, so... We're going to use those, but you guys will get to choose the keycaps we use on the board at the end. I don't know if it's green. I don't know what color it is. We'll see. We'll see. Um, have a snail. Thank you so much for the sub. Tasty, I thoroughly appreciate tasty. that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Time for me to die nine out of the ten races, Jelly says. Well, we'll see. We'll see. That's how it's going to go. The other thing we're going to do, which we're going to do first of all, is we're going to look at GMK's new profile, uh, GMK LP19, that's Lima Papa 19. So we'll take a look at that in a few minutes as well. Before we do that, though, I want to give you an update on uh, PT, prototypist, where are we at, what's happening this next week. So we're in a really good space. There are literally, there's one group by here at the workshop that we haven't yet shipped out. That's the Monarchy KV2. We're waiting on some replacement parts from Monarchy before we can start to ship those out. That's the only group buy we have here that hasn't yet been shipped. So that's going to happen tasty, tasty. as soon as we get it. The next group buys that we'll be shipping out will be arriving towards the back end of next week. So about a week and a half away from now. We're expecting our next shipment to arrive at port. There is about 20 or 30 group buys, excuse me. Um, so we're going to not have many group buys to ship out until the end of the month. That will coincide with my trip to Novel Keys meetup in Morgantown um, in the USA. So if you are coming to that, I'd love to see you. Do come up over and say hello because I will be at that meetup. Um, so yeah, so we'll see how that goes. But Mel will be here to manage us for and Sharon will be popping into the workshop as well to help us build through those group buys and ship them out as fast as possible. And as soon as I'm back from my trip, well, I'll be helping with that as well. Um, so yeah, so we're pretty much on top of things. Uh, in other news, there will be MT New Dolch going live in stock probably Monday or Tuesday. I'm just waiting for Novel Keys and the Blotsky. Uh, we all just need to kind of get our heads together and work out pricing for in stock and things like that. But they have literally arrived. They will be going in stock and we'll have them on the, sh they're on the shelf already, ready to go. They're downstairs, uh, MT New Dolch. Uh, maybe we'll show that off towards later on the stream or something. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's what we've got. Um, 
Tango saying, Colin lies on the switches. You still haven't used your vintage MX Blues. I haven't stripped them down and cleaned them. So I do still have those. And I have a load of other, it was a white lie. I have a load of other switches which you just wouldn't want to hear from like box pinks. No one wants to hear box pinks on stream. So yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Twitch Nubian, how do I turn off the auto captions? Uh, there's a little button that says CC at the bottom. You can just click that and it will turn off. Uh, Sacred Shapes, thank you so much for the Prime sub. That's 222 subs out of our goal for 230. If we do hit the 230, uh, as well as giving away the Cycle 8 keyboard to second place, we will give away a free GMK set as well. So, yeah, we'll do that as well. Just leaving the mode meetup now was a good time. Yeah, I couldn't make the mode one, but I do want to make the normal keys one. In fact, I've already paid for my... Uh, uh, my flights and stuff like that. So yeah, it'd be really, really cool. Um, <laughs> just trying to look through chat again as well. Any love for the Petrical last day tomorrow? I actually have a prototype of the original round in my drawer here. And yeah, the, pro the, the, the group by does finish tomorrow. So let's take a quick look at the website before we do anything else. And I'll show you guys what's going on in PT World. Uh, so TKD Cycle 8 is now live. You can join this group by. Um, it comes in some amazing colors and it's dirt cheap 155 quid including vat 129 excluding vat before you pick all of your options that's available right now in group buy as well so do take a look at that um in terms of in stock items we've recently put gmk cyl 1520 in stock this is a stunning set if you guys are into it um, i think we're the only people to have that in Incredible. stock so far and we've also just dropped the cat 65s into stock as well so if you're interested in the cat 65 take a look at it um, and you might be able to get a discount on these if England score a goal in the football tonight. So I am watching it for that. Um, we've also got things like SW Very Perry, you can see here, and of course the Prototypist t-shirts. I'm not wearing one today, um, but you can see uh, Mr. Blackbrook, one of our lovely moderators, wearing his PT t-shirt on the chat there as well. Um, before anyone asks what coffee I'm drinking as well, it is my own coffee from Jay's Row Story. Um, I'll drop a link to this in chat if anyone's interested in picking up some coffee. Um, so there we go. Uh, you can pick up. I'm drinking the Fiction Blend today, which is uh, this middle one here. Um, so you, you can join and have a look at our coffee if you're interested. Uh, the giveaway today, uh, someone's just asked about that. Um, uh, it says, is the giveaway after the game? No, the giveaway is going to be spread throughout the whole stream. What we're going to do is we're going to play marbles. We're going to play marbles 10 times. And whoever gets the most points in marbles across all 10 races will win the Cycle 8 keyboard. If we hit the subs goal and we hit 230 subs during the stream today, then second place will get a free GMK set. And we'll ship those to anywhere in the world. We'll cover the cost of the product and the cost of shipping. You just might have to pay any import duties if they're due Incredible. in your country. So yeah, so bear that in mind um but yeah that's pretty much it crow looks so good with the red logo at the back dude so many of the uh, cycle 8 colors look so good i personally think to match this keyboard i'm gonna get a uh ruby and a uh, peacock one and i'm gonna try and do this kind of effect with the cycle 8 as well because that's kind of like my color way that i really like personally so that's what we're gonna try and do ordered a ruby one myself nice nice so yeah, um, okay, so before we take a look at GMK's new profile, LP19, let's play the first game of marbles. So if I jump over into here, you guys should be able to see marbles on screen now. All you need to do, we've got all 10 tracks that you can see on the right hand side here. We're going to click on play and we're just going to do the first one now. So as soon as this loads up, you'll be able to type exclamation mark play and you'll be able to join in. Okay, there you go. You can see exclamation mark play will put you in the game. And this is the first race. Remember, the winner of this race doesn't win the board. It's the tasty, winner of the tasty. most points across all 10 races. You can see right at the very top here, we're on Grand Prix 1 of 10. So it's a case of, it's a case of uh, how many points can you score across the whole, whole series of races. And the more people who enter these races, the more chance we have of winning the Cycle 8. So anyone could win this. There is no... You know, it doesn't matter if you've won previously on, on the stream before or not. You know, anyone is free to win this. And the more races you win, the more chances you have of winning. So, yeah. Try and win a cycle eight. Lots of people joined. Uh, only 86 of you actually are in there. That's that's really low. But hey, if more people want to... There's like, there's like 210 Incredible. people it shows me watching right now on Twitch. So... 
Like, if you guys want to be in this to win it, I get loads of people watching the football, but like, if you want to win a cycle eight, all you need to do is do exclamation mark playing. We're gonna hit start. And let's see how this first race goes. Incredible. Three, two, one. Away we go. This is a dark map, so it's going to be difficult to see what's going on here. It looks like there's some uh, spinny things here as we come down the first section. Gizmo Gadget is probably just in the lead, but there's a few people catching up there. Let's come down to the bottom and see who makes it through. It's Zonosus the first through with Rotate as well there. Uh, Captain Reed isn't too far behind. Spinning round of the race, we go into the Tumblr, and then we're going to jump through uh, a portal. I don't know where we're going to go after that, but we'll see and figure out who goes through the portal first. Perlin Merlin's down at the bottom, so is Nitrum Namelock. Anyone could be out. Conan is out first and through the portal, and firing up onto this top section of track uh, we've got uh, Tanhouse and Meehan Solo just behind Clownfish is there as well so is Captain Reed I'm in the top 10 which is crazy kind of crazy uh, if I win obviously second place we'll get it overall well, Anarchy is there at the back Bloom's flying up now lots of people coming through right as we go into the castle I'm assuming there's going to be another portal there there is I don't know where we're going to go I assume it's going to be up here yeah, Conan is all the way up to the top first and into a pot of some sort. It's really difficult to see what's going on in this map because it's so dark, but it looks like Conan is still in the lead uh, with Mihan Solo just behind and a few others there as well. All still to play for, still a long way to the end. Let's see who is going to make it. It looks like maybe James is in the lead now. Clown Cr Captain Reed is in the lead. Clown Crown is just behind. Conan's there as well. Let an extra is there too. Still a little bit of a way to go, but not too far now. Uh, I don't know where the map goes after this. Oh, there's more. There is more to the map. Still a long way to go then. Okay, I thought it was going to take us to the end there, but it's not. So Captain Reed is in the lead with Crown Clown just behind. They're flying up to the top of the map just here where they're going to land. They're going down into this section now. There's a few people there. Tango formaldehyde the ojam 2 storm bless is coming through as well i'm there just on the outskirts of the top 10 anarchy is just rounding a corner as well uh, mcnamara is right at the very back but it looks like we're flying up to the last section now coming down who's in the lead it's impossible to tell all of the names are just kind of clumped up together and i don't actually know oh there we go it nope i thought that was the win it's not these are all are they the wins? Yeah, they are. So Conan wins the first race. That was really confusing because they're all flying out of the pit. Conan wins. Extra Chris B comes second. The Ant comes third. Captain Reed comes fourth. Formaldehyde comes fifth. Tankhouse comes sixth. Stormblast comes seventh. Ojan comes eighth. Preowned Amoeba comes ninth. And A Book comes tenth. Okay, so no one has won a prize yet, but we're well on the way. That's race one down. Uh, Conan uh, is looking uh, to be in the lead so far with the most number of points. Let's see if that holds up after the next eight races, nine races uh, over the course of the stream. Got nine races to go. Don't worry, we've still got plenty of races to go. Even if you miss the first race, there is 10 races across the whole stream and you can play as many or as few as you'd like. Uh, there are going to be times when people have... Uh, DNFs and things like that, all still to play for. It's all still to play for. Let's have a look at the results. Conan, Extra Crispy, Leap, uh, <laughs> Captain Reed, Formaldehyde, Tank House, Storm Blessed, Ojam 2, Pre owned Amoeba, and A Book New York. Uh, round at the top 10. Let's see who came at the back. So there was a few DNFs. I was a DNF, which is quite interesting. 74th was Shadow Realm, and 69th went to Eco Magami. So there we go. Okay, so that is race one done. We will do some more racing later on. Uh, 10 race Grand Prix, best way to spend Sunday, absolutely. Um, and as I said before, we will drop some discount codes in chat every time England scores a goal in the Euro Finals. Uh, we will give you a 10% discount, and if they score a second one, we'll bump it up to 20% discount on in-stock items. You retain points from early races, yep. So how it works is you build points over the 10 races. Doesn't matter how many points you get in the first race or last race, it's how many points you get across all of the races. Um, and you don't have to join all of the races. You can join a couple, you can join, you could join probably three and still have a good, a, just as good a chance of winning as anyone else. Um, think about it like a Formula One or other racing series kind of set of races across the time. So there we go. We do, we're doing the 10% uh, the discount for England goals up to a maximum of four goals of 40%. Um, and it will only be until the stream ends. So yeah, don't don't think you're going to get 100% discounts if they get 10% goals. That ain't happening. We're just going to count it up to 40%. We're just going to count it up to 40%. <sighs> Cool. Okay, so next thing I want to show you guys is GMKLP19. And if you guys haven't seen this, before I show you the keycaps themselves, which I have a sample pack of, um, GMKLP19 is 
a new keycap profile. You can see it here, it's the bottom one. You've got CYL, which is the profile that we all know and love as Cherry. We've got MT New, which was a profile they launched last year. And we've got LP19, which is here as well. Yeah, the football started. I've got the game on just in the corner of my monitor so I can see what's happening. Uh, it's still nil-nil at the moment. So LP19 is a completely flat profile um, and it's a modern style uh, low profile keycap. And we have some of the samples here. So I wanted to show you these because I think it's quite interesting. Now, I'm currently waiting for a full list of what's available for these keycaps from a mold perspective. Um, but here you go, you can see if I keep it in the light, Come on, camera, focus. Camera, please. These are a very, very low profile keycap. When you compare them to standard cherry keycaps, and bear in mind these are a uniform profile as well. So you can see that LP19 has a much smaller cross section. And it is technically cylindrical. I don't know if you can see that on stream, but it is technically cylindrical. If I try and put like a white background behind you, you might be able to see. It is technically cylindrical. They are fully double shot, as all GMK keycaps are. And they're really, really interesting. Oops, dropping the keycaps, they're so thin. Um, they're really, really interesting keycaps. Camera, please, focus. Camera, please. So they're a really interesting keycap. So I think these are ABS. They feel like ABS. They don't feel like PBT. They feel definitely like ABS, but I haven't had that confirmed at the moment. Um, it might be that GMK is able to offer these in both. They do do homing keys as well. So here is the F as a homing key. If the camera would decide to focus, please come on camera. So you can see here, this is a homing key. I don't have enough to test like a full keyboard build. I can probably grab a macro pad and put some on a macro pad. Let me just grab a switch puller. So these are cherry diceps. Incredible. Yeah, the font's still the same as uh, CYL profile, as far as I can tell. Uh, it's a little bit thinner. It's not the same thickness. So it looks like it's a little bit thinner. Um, let me see if we can find an actual comparative letter for you. There you go. So you can see the text is a little bit thinner overall, but it's the same font by the looks of it as uh, as Cherry Profile. It doesn't look any different from the profile perspective. Maybe less rounded actually on the A, uh, probably due to the, uh, the, the thickness of the keycap lettering. So the thickness of the legend. So it's probably a bit sharper on the A. So there we go. Surface area looks bigger. No, the surface area is about the same. It feels the same. Um, it's it's about the same as the base. Oh wait, it's the same on the base of the keycaps look. So if I do that, you can see that it's the same on the base of the keycaps. But if you just cut the top off of uh, a cherry profile keycap and then flattened it, that's where it would be. So the top is slightly larger, but only from a, uh, it's the same kind of like shape, just cut different. Like if you took a cone, you cut it at different levels, you'd have a thicker piece or a thinner piece. Um, so that's all, but uh, yeah. That's it. That's pretty much it. They, they they do look pretty cool. They're very interesting. Can I show them in pen as a side view? Of course, can you? Yeah. As you see, these are completely flush, completely flat. Now I only have uh, the um, home row keycaps for this. I don't have any of the other keycaps. All of the ones that I have are home row keycaps, just different versions and uh, in terms of letters and things. So. 
I can't show you what different rows look like, but they should be the same in theory. And I'm waiting for confirmation on a full list of uh, molds that they have available. But these are pretty cool. And I don't think anyone else has got these yet. I think I'm the first person to have these, uh, certainly on stream anyway. So yeah, they're pretty interesting. The texture is very similar to brand new GMK. Um, the double shotting is almost identical in terms of how they how they achieve the double shot. That's almost identical. They managed to fit a recessed stem in there. Yeah, the stem is kind of like just basically shorter. Um, the, the 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 keycaps work in the same manner, and the travel is exactly the same. Um, yeah. It's just a recessed stem. I think it, it's basically if you took a cherry home row keycap and sliced the top of it off um, until it was only, you know, what's that? Six mil thick, probably. Six mil in depth. Um, so yeah, just really, really interesting. So if these are an option, uh, we'll try and get a set running in them fairly soon so that we can try them out properly and show you the guys them as well. Did I do that on purpose? What with the ASD? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, the, the, the codes will only apply to in stock items. Yeah. The codes will only apply to in stock items when we do it. Uh, it's still nil nil, half, oh, 27 minutes into the game. So there may be no discount codes if there's no goals scored. <laughs> So yeah, any visibility on pricing or basically the same as current GMK and TV pricing. Charlotte Coote says, I have no idea. Like as far as I've got with uh, with this is is requesting samples, which I've received. I have requested a full breakdown on lists of molds they have available. So I can figure out if they have UK ISO, if they have, um, you know, full size shifts and split back spaces, or if we're going to be looking at 40% keyboards or what. Don't know yet. Don't know. I can't answer any questions on that just yet, um, just because I don't know the answer to it. But I'm really, really excited about these. Um, they're pretty cool, and they look great. They look fantastic. They just look so good. So yeah, we'll see. Um, there's a good chance for 40% discount if we're going to penalties. We said goals, not penalties. Penalties aren't goals, right? We'll see. We'll see. I'll figure out that. I'll figure that out when we get to it. <laughs> uh, if it's only one uniform sculpt for all rows, could you just mount it in a column just to see how it would look? Sure, we can have a look at that. Forty percent of penalties, but only for the duration of penalties. Only for the duration of England penalties. So not whilst uh, Spain are taking them. I'll just have to keep like turning on and off, and you guys will have to try and get through. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. That's what they will look like. Completely uniform profile. So it's really interesting profile. Um, I think it would work really well on a lot of smaller splits like the Kyria and stuff like that. So let's see. Gonna break the shop. Well. We'll worry about penalties when we get there. There's still there's still 15 minutes left of this half, and then there's still another 45 minutes of the game to go after. I've managed to watch anything for Festival of Speed. Yeah, I've had it on most days. Uh, not watched all of it, but I've had bits and pieces. I was watching some of the rally stuff earlier on. Um, I didn't see any of the accidents yet, though. So Not that I want to watch people crash. That's not the case at all, but yeah. I do think I like the profile. It looked very good in specific use cases. Yeah, it looked great on some of like the, the, the split keyboards that you see out there as well. And, Incredible. Um, yeah, we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. So that's GMK LP19. Um, it's a really interesting profile. Feels like ABS, but I'm getting full specs at some point soon. Um, what I will do is I will share the, the book that I shared earlier on. So. Um, this, this is kind of like a, a PDF booklet that kind of shows a lot of stuff like uh, uh, I've actually been to this part of GMK's factory that you can see here. Um, so this bit here, I've walked up and down here and I've seen keycaps coming off. There's like literally keycaps coming off the thing there. Um, so if you want to have a look at this booklet, there's like, it's just basically a GMK kind of product knowledge thing. Um, I can share the link to this booklet with you. There's nothing in here that's uh, it's probably wildly available on the internet anyway so you can take a look at that if you want to but yeah jimk lp19 
it's now a thing. Um, we'll have to see how it goes, but I'll, I'll see if we can do something with it. Um, it'll be really fun to do something with those, I think, and have kind of like a full base kit or come up with some ideas for base kit. So we'll see. 10% increase on prices for all, for each Spangle. Say good shapes. No, no. I, I think that's quite 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 funny, but no. Remember them, those QMX clips? Uh, they were not great. No, I never enjoyed those QMX clips. I only ever used them in one build and I didn't enjoy them at all. Um, in fact, I put them on some switches and I don't think they were cherry switches. I think there were some Gatoron switches and then I could never get them off. And I ended up having to snap them to get them off, which was, which was terrible. A more sculpted G20 through le uh, the less height. G20 was not a popular profile, so interesting they would go that route. I think LP19 has been designed with commercial customers in mind. I don't think it's been designed with the community in mind, like the hobbyist community. Uh, it feels very much like a modern keycap for point of sale tills and things like that, so. Um, not interested in the Euro final chain. Um, Sam, I have it on just at the side here. I, I've got it on on my monitor just down here. You can't see it, but literally just here. I've got like a little section of my monitor displaying the England game. Um, 32 minutes into it. Um, <laughs> looks like it could be used on laptops. Yeah, if you had a laptop with a, a mechanical keyboard, you would probably use that. Uh, you'd probably need some custom mold sizes for things like shift and backspace and escape and things like that, depending on how the... Uh, laptop keyboard is laid out, but as I say, I, I am waiting from GMK to, to find a full list of what's actually available in LP19. But it's pretty cool that we've got some sample caps in. As far as I know, no one else has had these yet. Um, yeah, we'll have to see. But I'm pretty excited for them. I actually did send uh, some of these out to a friend of mine who is very much into split keyboards and things like that. He hasn't, I don't know if he's received them as yet, but we did send them out last week. Um, if he has, um, I'll get some thoughts of him as well because when it comes to low profile MX switches, he knows more than I do. Um, in fact, I don't actually have any low profile MX switches. I only have full size ones, but you could do some pretty cool stuff with that. So yeah. Any news on the T9 ship, stock and shipping dates? Uh, so yeah, you can get updates off of the website at any point. Um, it's still in production. Um, so, you know, updates are there. That's, that's it, it's in production. There's not much else to tell you when it's in production. Um, the date is still the target date when we sold it, so whatever date we had on the product listing when we sold it. Let's have a look at that. You know, if you go to the website um, and you search for the T9 keyboard kit. What did we say? Q3 to Q4 this year, yeah. Shipping time Q3 to Q4. And if you go to our updates pages, which are here, updates, and then go to keyboards, the T9 will be in here in manufacturing, I would assume. Let's have a look. Uh, you, which you won't be in here now, just to just to annoy me. Deadline Studio T9 in manufacturing, still estimating Q3 to Q4, 2024. There you go. That's the latest update. There is nothing else I can tell you on on that particular product. So there you go. That's how you can get everything. <clears throat> Uh, there are some uh, mechanical keyboards out there that have MX stems uh, historically. So you could look at Dolch Pack, which technically could be classed as a laptop, I guess, that had MX switches, full size MX switches in it. Um, I actually have some vintage keyboards, uh, some vintage laptops that do have full size MX switches in um, and MX key keycaps as well. So yeah, they do exist. The, the dark blues that we talked about earlier on on stream, they came from, a, from an old laptop. So yeah. Um, yeah, maybe we haven't had any recent ones, but they could absolutely do it now. There are there are certainly some um, low profile MX mount switches that you could put on a laptop these days, but you'd need something quite deep either way. So you'd need probably a gaming machine or something. Okay. So that's, uh, that's PT news kind of given. Um, as I say, we will be doing some discounts today, but it depends on England scoring a goal. And at the moment it's nil-nil. So, you know, we kind of need to get them to win. I think Acer made some 21 inch gaming notebooks with MX styles in a couple of years ago. They might well have done. I seem to remember something quite recently with an MX stem in it. I, I know I have some vintage laptops that had MX switches in because I have physically have them downstairs um, in the workshop. But I, I feel like there was one semi-recently that did it with as well with the 
MX mount low profile switches. I may have to dig, do some digging. I may have to do some digging and try and find that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, okay. So, yeah. So that's the latest on PC. Um, we'll be back at Hard at Work tomorrow, shipping out all of your install quarters. Um, we will do a discount if we hit it. And we're going to build the Theseus 75 uh, in a few minutes. Now, don't forget, guys, we are doing the giveaway today for the Cycle 8. And we are going to do 10 races across all of the stream. It's now time for race number 2 of 10. This is the second race of the season. Um, so we're going to play marbles for the second race of the season. We're going to go on to the next map. And if you guys want to play the next race with us, all you need to do is type into chat, exclamation mark play, and it will put you in. A few people are in there already. You can see I'm in there too. We're going to do Incredible. the second race of 10. You can see at the top, we're on race two of 10. You want to try and get as many points as you can. So you want to be in as many races as possible if you want to win and TK these like eight. And we'll take a look at the cycle in a minute. Incredible. Comes fully built with switches, but no keycaps. This, this might be your first race. If you if, race, if you've already missed a race, don't worry. You can still join from race two and onwards, and still keep trying to win. So I'm going to hit play as soon as we hit 95. There we go. We've got 10 seconds left to join, guys. And it looks like uh, oh, we've played this map before. We've played this map before. This should be a nice, easy one to to commentate on. Okay, and off we go. It looks like Bacon is in the lead there just as we come down into the loop. Lots of people taking different lines here as we come down and through. Uh, let's see who's going to get into the hole first. It looks like who's Bunny Hop and Midgey Bacon with La La Blah and True Blaze might be the first few. Looks like Rockets is right at the back, but that could be a ploy to get down to the bottom quicker. We'll see as they come round and round and round. Uh, this could all change. Gouty looks like there as well. Let's drop down and see who makes it through the bottom first. It is Densus Designs with Gouty and who's Bunny Hop. Josh Joshio is not too far behind Midgey Bacon's there as well. As they come around the first corner and go into the little bit of the loop. We're going to come under the track itself again. Let's see who's at the back. We've got Shiloh Kutus and Rockets is at the back but there we go uh looks like the lead has changed a little bit now josh joshio is fighting from fifth to come around gouty has now taken the lead as we come down remember no winner for the no prize for the winner of this race it's whoever gets the most points across all of the races looks like midgey bacon might be just about to take the lead as well as they come around this spiral section uh anarchy is there doing really really well in the top 10 as well uh zengayo is right in the middle duodod's right in the middle as well jelly masters coming towards the back and conan and storm blessed right up there at the rear with rocket still quite a chunk of time behind Mind. Uh, Shiloh Kuta is not doing, too, doing so well either, either here. Uh, Josh Joshio, Gouty and Midgey Bacon are the, in the lead though. These are the top three. These are the ones to beat but there's still a long, long way to go. A lot of obstacles in the way and they're all taking different lines as we go through this series of corners. Oh, it looks like we've had a first series of deaths. Loads of deaths just there. These little platforms are opening up and people are dying as we come through. So anyone, all of this race could change. All of this race could change. Lots of people dying. Rockets is right at the back. Might not make it through all these sections with all of the uh, the things open. But Gouty and Midget Bacon now have a big, big lead. And they are racing against each other. It's those two against the rest of the pack right now. Anarchy's probably in fifth or sixth here. Alvi's kind of at the back of the first pack. But Midgey Bacon and Gouty are storming ahead. Uh, we've got Zenkyu and Shadow Realm and Mejimu uh, and me as well. We're all coming through in this middle section. Lots of people come flying down off this ramp. Jelly Master's there, so is Perlin, so is Stormblast. We're racing down here now. Uh, whoa, big jumps, big jumps. Loads of people just died. Uh, that puts Sacred Shapes into the lead. Uh, like pretty much everyone who was leading the race up until that point has just gone and died. So congratulations, guys. It looks like Elkino Flop and Sacred Shapes are in the lead. And Elkino Flop takes the win. Sacred Shapes is on the way down, but Rufus McFloofus could beat them here. Lots of deaths there right at the very end. That is so funny. We have a winner. We only had two finishers. We only had two finishers. Three finishers. Alkino Flop, Rufus McFloofus, and Sacred Shapes were the only three finishers. Only three people to add points onto their tally. Everybody else did die. They all did a die. They all did a, a, a DNF and didn't make it through. Congratulations, guys. That is race number two. Okay, so that's race number two done. Uh, we'll do race number three in a little bit of time. Uh, before we do race number three, two DNFs in a row. Hey, man, you've got to be in it to win it. Got to keep going. You've got to keep going. The, winning two races is all you need to, to, to get there. Oh, I died, says Gouty. Yeah, you were in the lead for a long way until you flew off the map. 
such is the way of these things. Uh, still nil-nil in the England game. 41 minutes into the match. Four minutes left of this half. And then we've got another 45 minutes. Hopefully England are going to score. And you guys are going to get a discount. But before we go any further, let's take a look at what you could be winning today. Which is a Cycle 8 keyboard. When does that happen in F1? Uh, the closest I can think of was when there was a tyre controversy in 2006, I think. And only six cars actually made it to the starting grid. So yeah. There was a race at Monaco. I can't remember what year it was. There was a race at Monaco and I think only five or six cars finished as well. So it does happen. Very, very rarely. But it does happen. Rip. Rip. <laughs> hey, someone's going to win. And you have to be in it to win it. So... That is a brutal track. Like, 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 fifty percent of people just died two seconds before the end. Oh well, damn, DNF'd. Yeah, I'm sorry. 1996 was that when it was? Yeah, I, I do remember watching it. Yeah. How old would I have been in 1996? I'd have been 11. That just shows you how long I've been watching Formula One. Godzilla Waddle. If you get all ten DNFs, maybe I'll I'll hit you up with a, a PT T-shirt. If if if. Whoever the, whoever goes all 10 as DNFs, maybe maybe I'll do a booby prize for it. Maybe I'll do a booby prize for it. Okay, let's take a look at this cycle 8 before we start building the Theseus 75, which I'm really excited for. So, this is what you guys are trying to win today. Ugh. Oh, we still have the web page up. Let's get rid of that. There we go. This is a cycling. We did build this on stream last week, so you can go back and check the build stream if you want. Um, comes in this lovely box. These are the foams we didn't use. I'll definitely get ten DNFs. All right, maybe maybe the maybe the whoever's the right at the very bottom of the list with ten DNFs will uh, will give them the prize. I can't give everyone a prize that gets ten DNFs. I think we still owe Anarchy a T-shirt from last week. I'll check with Mel if that's been shit on. But this is the TKD Cycle 7 we built last week. It has GMK Moonlight on it. It doesn't come with caps because those are my personal keycaps. But it will come fully built, as you can see in here, just without the keycaps. So this is all fully working. This is the Cycle 8 prototype we built last week. Got a lovely side profile. A lovely kind of logo just on the back of the rear as well, just there. And then lots of fingerprints all over the base as I manhandle it with that brass based weight. That's not a scratch on it. That's just uh, just to show that that's not a scratch. So there you go. That's what you could be winning. Love the silver. Yeah, this is the lunar color weight. It was Olivia Panis who won it. Yeah, I remember that. So this is what you're playing for today. That's that's why it's really important to be in the races because it's such a cool prize. Um, so yeah, so as I say, it won't come with keycaps, but it will come with the full build. It'll come with all of the kit gubbins that we didn't use on stream as well, all of the different farms so you can play around with it and get it to sound exactly how you'd like. And if you prefer it desoldered and without switches in, we can do that for you as well. So that's the build. And that is uh, also in group buy right now. You can go and buy the TKD Cycle 8 right now in group buy at local vendors near you, including prototypes keyboards, which is us. So definitely, definitely check that out. What were the keycaps again? The keycaps on that were GMK Moonlight. Um, obviously, they don't come with the board. It is just the, the keyboard that you win, not the keycaps. Because the keyboard is a business thing. <laughs> the keycaps are my personal collection. You popped your audio in. You went for the Void Elf. Yeah. So, um, like, if you look at the, the, the Cyclate group buying, like, the colours are just so good. So, you've got, you've got the Crow, which is this one here. Um, you've got the Metal which is kind of like a, a gunmetal grey. Um, you've got the ruby, which is possibly my favourite colour. This is so good. The ruby is so nice. And I'm getting a peacock and a ruby, personally. I'm going to buy two boards. And I'm going to use the, the, the ruby base and the peacock top case. So the top case with the bottom case. And then make up the other one the other way around. Void Elf is a great colourway as well. That purple really, really slaps. An outsider, which I actually really, really like, though, is the aloe. I'm not sure if I buy this personally, but I do really, really like the colour. I think that's come out really cool as well. Um, of course, you've got the uh, the zeal red as well, which really pops. The cream, 
there's just so many good colors we've actually sold quite a few of the lemon i i only own one yellow keyboard and it has gmk panels on it and it's in use in the office downstairs but i actually really rate that color that color is pretty nice the color's pretty nice um and then if you want to use beige man this acorn keyboard would look so good with some vintage beige keycaps on it like yeah vintage beige keycaps um, and then of course there is the blue canvas as well, which Jim K denim every day of the week on that one, I think. And finally, there is the rock colorway as well. So yeah, so these are, this, this is a coating one as well. So there's two different types, there's anodized ones and coating ones. Um, you can see here, the, oh, you can't see the drop down, but if you go onto the web page yourself, uh, you can see the drop downs. Um, the coated ones are slightly more expensive. They had at eight pounds 33 before VAT, but then there's so many different options. I haven't even worked it out, but there's 14 colors. There is three internal um, covers. There is four different weights. There's four different layouts. So you can have it with LED or without LED. So, um, and then there's, six different PCBs, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. The six different PCBs, including the Hall Effect one as well. Uh, and there's three different places. So I don't know how many, com let's work out how many combinations that would be actually. Let me go for a calculator. Okay, so we've got 14 colors. We've got three internal weights. So we've got 14 times three. Uh, sorry, internal covers. We've got four different weights. So we're gonna multiply that by four. Uh, we've got four different layouts, so we're going to multiply it by four again. Uh, we've got six PCBs, so we're going to multiply that by six. And we've got three plates, so we're going to multiply that by three. That means there are 12,096 different options. Like, if you, depending on how you wanted to select all of these options on the website here, you could have 12,096 different combinations. So the, the odds of someone actually having the same combination as you, pretty slim especially when you start to throw in all the different switches that you could put on there and keycaps as well. Pretty good way to get a unique keyboard. Jboard? No. Acorn is the hidden gem of a colorway. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people are going to realize when they start seeing the acorn out there in the wild that it's uh, that it's really good. Coating versus anodization. I think it really depends for me what color you want to go for. I've always been a big fan of anodization. Um, but the coatings can't be denied. Um, for me, I think the, the ruby and the peacock are just the two colors I'm really drawn to. If I wasn't going for those, though, I would be getting the acorn, I think. Yeah. Hard to believe that it's anno on the aloe. I thought it was a coated color. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. What color would you suggest for Metropolis? Um, like, if I was going to put GMK Metropolis on any of these, what would I go for? I would probably go for, I think it'd look quite good on the canvas, tasty, tasty. Um, but it's a darker blue. So I'd probably realistically go for metal, I think, or I'd try and tie in with one of the colored keycaps, like the red or the teal. So it'd probably look quite good on Peacock and it'll probably look quite good on Zeal as well. Um, I'm just trying to see if anyone's got a similar colorway on there. No, the boards with the colorways on, there's nothing quite the same as Metropolis, but yeah. Um, yeah, Jags looks so good on that actually. Look at Jags on that one. Jim K Jags on Rock. That's a great combo. That's a great combo. Earth Tones on Peacock though as well. That goes so hard. That really slaps. That really slaps. Peacock. <laughs> it goes well on Peacock. P Rocket? Uh, JQ, that doesn't make any sense. Rock Coating Peak. <laughs> Thanks Manu for the sub as well. I appreciate that. Nine months. You like it on yellow as well? That's a really good idea, actually, Poshi. Um, on the yellow, that might work really, really well, actually. That that blue and yellow kind of combo could be quite fire. Yeah, I quite like that. I quite like that. So Stereo Geo, basically any color is the answer here. I think you could go for any color. If you only ever want to buy, if you ever only want to buy one of the Cyclates instead of two, I'll trade you the Ruby Bottom for a Peacock. Um, well, I haven't actually bought yet Alvi, but we could do that. Like, you could have the alternate one to mine, and we could have like mix and match keys. I quite like that. It's quite romantic. I like it. Um, yeah, we could do that. We could do that. They did the math. Yeah, twelve thousand ninety-six different combinations. That's a lot. That's a lot. Like, how many keyboards do you know that come with twelve thousand ninety-six different combinations? Like, I really don't. I don't. <laughs> uh, still got one Metropolis here, which I won last year on stream, but I can't choose a color. Nice. Okay. 
Okay, well, I'm just going to tell you what to do. Order the peacock. Stereo Jer, order the peacock. I expect to see when I finish streaming an order from you for the peacock. Yeah, that's what he expects. Unless you're using a different vendor, in which case I won't see it. So, yeah. QK100 was 500,000 different combinations. Was it? I don't remember that. Let's have a look. I, I'm, I'm not sure on that one. Let's have a look. Um, let's have a look. QK100 group. All right, let's take a look. Uh, QK100 keyboard kit. Let's see how many different options there were. One, two, three. All right, calculator. Get a calculator. Okay, what are you doing? So on color, there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve colors. So we've got a base of twelve, uh, and we're going to multiply that by the weight. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different weights. Okay, so we're going to multiply that by twelve. Uh, plates, there was one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to multiply it by five. Um, PCBs, there was one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to multiply it by five again. Badge and bezel color, there was one, two, three, four. So we're going to multiply it by four. Um, design, we've got one, two, three, four. So we're going to multiply that by four as well. And then you could have it with keycaps or without, and you could have so one, two, three, four, five, uh, five different ways there. So times it by five. So there was two hundred eighty-eight thousand different combinations for that, not five hundred thousand combinations. Two hundred eighty-eight thousand combinations for it, based on on the math that I can see, um, based on all the configurations that we had available when we sold it anyway. So yeah, so it wasn't you. You, you were right. It's a bigger number. Close enough. You you are. Uh, I mean. <sighs> If 220, uh, 212,000 is close, like if, if, if being 212,000 units away is close, then sure. That did include the bundle colors. Yeah, that included the bundle colors. Yeah, that included them. If you wanted all 12,096 combinations, you need about 1.9 million. Um, so here's, here's a deal for you. If any one customer buys all 12,096 combinations from the website, I will deliver them to you uh, in some speedos and your choice of footwear. You can pick any footwear for me and I will even get Mel to like make up my face and I'll shave my beard off because yeah, no one will, no, no one will ever buy all 12,096 combinations. But if anyone does, I will do all of those things. I think if, uh, if I went to, if I went to, um, to TKD and said someone has bought all 12,096 units, they would probably let me make them for that kind of money. <laughs> Might take me two through to three days to put the order in. How many containers is 12 I don't even know. I don't even know. Like it should fit in one container, one forty foot container. Yeah, it'd fit in one forty foot container. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you skipping configurations with internal weights on the cycle eight? Yeah, like we have that as an add-on item, so I'm not counting add-on items as you know different combinations for the keyboard kit. Like you can add that on later on. If we started getting in the weeds there, like we're talking about millions of different combinations because you could have so many different types of switches that we have on the store and all of these kind of things. So yeah, yeah. So we're not doing that, but yeah, that would be an opportunity. Tape two raise the tape two raise the keyboard to your feet. Sure, yeah. You buy all twelve thousand ninety six combinations. I will. I will take two razor keyboards to each foot if you would like and I will I will use a razor keyboard for the rest of my life yeah. So yeah I feel like this is fake advertising. No, I think I think I could get TKD to make them Someone said as well that the spider is gonna come in the ruby color as well, which is really cool if it does I'd be, I'm, I'm kind of really excited to see that if it does um, So yeah, how much would it cost a couple of mil a couple of mil um, like it's impossible to like work it out, but if you if you worked out like the average price, like you could work it out actually quite easily on a spreadsheet. But I don't have the time for that. Um, but realistically, you could you could probably work it out if you uh, if you if you went through it. But I, I'd estimate that the average cost is going to be about 165. So 165 quid times 12,096. Let's uh, 165 times 12,096. You took yeah, 1.9 million is probably about right. So you're talking probably 1.8 to 2 million quid, depending on your depending on what all the configurations work out. At. So not cheap would be the answer. 
not cheap would be the answer. Uh, Sam Ghost says, uh, which one board was the one that you got into your rabbit hole? Uh, so it wasn't actually a keyboard that got me into the rabbit hole. It was a key set, and it was the original run of SA Calm Depths in 2014. Before that, I'd been using a poker keyboard and some other mechanical keyboards as well, a couple of vintage ones. But SA Calm Depths, the original group by 2014, that was the key set that kind of got me into the rabbit hole. And then about a year later, GMK started to run group buys as well. Well, group buys through GMK will run. Um, so yeah, yeah. I think I got nine combinations of the eight. Yeah, that's probably like I didn't. I haven't seen anyone order nine through us VCTO, so you probably ordered it through someone else. But that's a big order. That's a big order. How much would it cost to buy one of everything on the website? I don't even know. Like, like to buy all of our stock right now any any given time we're roughly floating between at retail price we're floating somewhere between 900,000 and 1.2 million in terms of the value of stock on the shelves here so it's kind of hard to say what it would cost to buy one of everything but if you wanted to buy all of the stock it's around a million quid um give or take so yeah Two, we've only had two races so far, go a few, so plenty of races still to go, even if you had, some people have had two DNFs already, so uh, even if you haven't joined the races yet, you're still in a good enough position to, uh, to, to to be in there for the win. So let's do race three now, actually. Let's uh, let's jump over and do race three. Uh, exclamation mark play will put you into the race, just like so. And we'll do race three now. And remember, this is to win the Cycle 8 keyboard. Tasty, 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 tasty! Thank you so much for the sub. I, I don't know who that was. Uh, it's gone off my screen. Uh, uh, Lorit's Lor Ark. Thank you so much for the sub. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. We're almost at the sub goal as well. Only five away from the sub goal. Okay, so yeah, so you've got to be in it to win it. There's nearly there's 208 people watching right now. You guys should be like getting into this to to try and win. So. Yeah, you've got to be in it to win it, right? And it, you only have to be in like a couple of races to get enough points to win. Because in most of the races, most people aren't going to score any points. So, yeah. You have to be in as many races as possible. But even if you've missed some, some people have DNF'd all the way through so far. Incredible. Okay, I'm going to hit start. Because we're at about 110 people. You've got 10 seconds left to join. And it looks like we've got a Plinko board to start with. And then quite a long map. Three seconds, two, one. Okay, and away we go. Let's see who's going to make it through the Plinko Plonko board first. It looks like maybe Yes is coming down the far side. But someone else is going to get there first. And it is Hungry Hippo and Pink Prinkus, Prince Skipper Skipel is there as well. Anarchy also doing really well in the top three there. But slowing down on the corner. Not making it quite so far past. Rue is there as well. So is Azora. They've got a bit of speed coming through. But it looks like Hungry Hannah is taking the lead. Oh, slowed down because of the invisible ramp that just popped up there. But still in the lead. Everyone else is going around the sides. Ball Boy's there as well. Not doing too badly. Jelly Master and Toasty Baps and Conan and Funky are running up the rear. Still a long way to go though. Ball Boy and Hungry Hannah are in the lead just at the side of each other. But Zakon has taken the lead. Zaknob has just rushed straight past. Kaz Online is there on the far side as well. So is Hammer Brother as well. And we've got Marcus coming through. And it's Benish Perlin. Merlin's probably there just outside the top 10. It's gonna. It's got a long way to go, but this is quite interesting. Uh, the knob is there as well, <laughs> looking coming through. Kaz online is probably just in second place. Yes, take second place there. Uh, Megano comes through. Maricus as well. Hungry Hannah has finally caught back up. Captain Mal is there with Pearl and Miller. Captain Mal, what a great username. I do love that. Uh, all of you, uh, you, 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 you fans of uh, a certain TV show, Captain Mal was great. Um, Coops is there as well. Cryo Tango is coming through. Goat Few is there eighth as well. Looks like. O Ogem and Ball Boy are the two in the lead though right now. Noofy's there too. So is Mihan Solo. Uh, Exists is there as well. Subscribe just before the stream. Still quite a long way to go. We've got a bit of a roundabout situation going on here. And then some more obstacles and some... Oh gosh, it gets really complex going down there. What a long way to go. Let's see how this goes out though. Uh, Captain Redlack is there as well. So is Zakonov. Ogem 2 is keeping up. Skimson and Sky Lakutas are doing well. Gemma is down. Gemma has died. Poor Gemma. Uh, she's going for the uh, for the for the triple DNF here. Uh, so is used chopstick. Uh, <laughs> keep Science is right in the middle there as well. Some people keep going backwards here. Bloom is going backwards there though. 
backwards through the pack. Tangaus is down, dead. Still some people coming up at the back. Oxy's there at the back. Perlin Merlin's gone from the top five right down to the back of the top, the last five. Uh, IQ UK is, or JQ UK there as well. Uh, let's keep up with the front. Ojam still has the lead and with Skimson and Bartowski not too far behind. Nufi is there as well. Let's see who comes down into this section here. It looks like we're going to split the team. Mihan Solo got a better ride out of that, but it looks like 8th, 8th is dropping off the side. I thought they might have just made it back onto the track, but they didn't. Somebody else dropped off the top and made it onto the track. Looks like Hammer Brother now has the lead by skipping most of the content there, straight out the top and down to the bottom. Hammer Brother is now in uh, a bit of a lead. And no one else is catching them anytime soon. Ojam 2 is coming around there as well, but Hammer Brother has the lead. Still a long way to the end because there's a, a whole different raft of stuff here. A little bit of a ramp to go through and all sorts there. But it looks like Rufus is here up as well and in second place. Ojam's there as well. Nufi's there too. Matt Black and Skimson there as well. Nimble Machine and Pinker Skipple Nipple is there as well. So is Rue. Uh, right at the very back. Perlin's on her own. Right at the very back. Perlin, what are you doing? Perlin looks like she's stuck. Incredible. Perlin is stuck. Oh dear. Perlin is going to not make it through this one. It looks like Hammer Brothers all the way down to the bottom of this slide now. Let's see where they end up because I don't know how this section works. But I think you can randomly come out into different places. Um, are they stuck? They haven't finished because they haven't gone green. Try and find out where Hammer Brothers are. Looks like Rufus McFloofus takes the win. It looks like Hammer Brother died somehow. Rufus McFloofus, Ojam, Mihan Solo, somebody else, Bartowski, Skimson, Matt Black, Uoxy, Nimble Machine, and Prince Skipper Skipel round out the top 10. Hammer Brother somehow just didn't quite make it, just got stuck somewhere. So I'm really sorry, Hammer Brother, but it looks like you just didn't make it. Oh well, there we go. That is the race. That's the third race. Warhack's got clipped into the wall. Yeah, it looks like it. It's for, that's the punishment for skipping half the track, right? Lots of people keep on keeping on coming down. Uh, it looks like Perlin's already died because the map's catching up. Loads of people are going to die here at the back. Uh, I was right at the very back as well on this one. Punish for your sins. Yeah. Such is the way of the game. Such is the way of marbles. Okay, let's take a look at the results on that one. See how that all panned out in real time uh, when the map ends. And boom, there we go. So, final results are Rufus McFloofus, Ojam, Mihan Solo, somebody else, Bartowski, Skimson, Matt Black, Uoxy, Nimble Machine, Prince Skipper Skepal, round out the top 10. Uh, let's see who got 69th, because that's always funny to check. 69th went to uh, Lane 20, congratulations. And the last person through was Zizora. Look at all the DNFs here. All these people go for DNFs. So, yeah. Okay. So, that's race number three over. Uh, we'll do the next one later on in the stream. And remember, it is a race of ten tracks. So, yeah. <laughs> I use code ID clip. Yeah. Cheaters get caught, right? Cheaters get caught. How do people have thousands of points? Uh, some of the points that you see there are from previous races, but the points uh, are from this particular race. No, points from previous races prior to the stream don't count. It's just kind of like a lifetime score that they've had, so you don't need to worry about that. This particular Grand Prix is just these 10 races, and it's only points generated across these 10 races. That's how it works. So, yeah. Okay, the football is back on, but it's still nil-nil. Um, yeah. Some games only three people finish, so I think there's one more points. They do, yeah. The fewer people finish, the more points are distributed in those three. But yeah, yeah. You don't need to worry about historic points and scores and wins and things. It's only from it's races today that's going to count. So, no discount codes yet because England have yet to score. But for every England goal, we will do 10% discount up to a maximum of 40% off in stock items. So, you need to start rooting for England to score some goals because it's currently nil nil. Anyway. Right, okay, it is time for us to build the Theseus 75. So let's unbox this and take a look. Um, you'll be seeing this for the first time with me because I haven't opened this as yet, guys. Let's get rid of the browser. Uh, Spain have just scored. Spain have just scored. Literally just watched it out of the corner of my eye and flicked over. Spain have just scored. Wow. It is 1-0 to Spain. The England team do not look happy. The England team do not look happy. The Spanish team look very happy. 
No, I'm not doing a 10% reverse discount. A 10% additional cost, yeah. Well, we've got an ad first. So before, well, while the ad's running, um, I'm going to take a quick quick break and nip, uh, and nip and take a comfort break. I'll be back in one minute when the ad's done and then we'll uh, we'll carry on with the Thesis 75 build. I'll be back in a second, guys. Okay, guys, I am back. <clears throat> no longer shipping to Spain. No, we'll ship to Spain. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. But it is 1-0 to Spain. So, yeah. <laughs> no gym case. That's one last week that got to Spain. I think they will be in ship tonight. If they haven't, they'll be going out on Monday from last week, I think. But, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll... We have, for more GMK giveaways, we have to hit the sub score, right? So... I have to see how that goes. <sighs> the eloquent quick uh, clicks guys are nice. I wouldn't want to have a rivalry with them. Come on, England. You can win this. You can. <clears throat> I'm just watching this. It's like, yeah, it's not going to happen. Looks like it's just juice. It's just like a dilute juice. That's all it is. Uh, apple and blackcurrant flavor. Yeah, just to wet my whistle, as it were. Okay, right. Let's do the unboxing of the Thesis 75 then, because that's what we're building today. <clears throat> I think that's the first time I've seen prototypers drink something other than coffee on stream i always have a glass of juice at the side because i get headaches from the lights when i'm streaming so i always have some juice to just keep drinking yeah in compensation we invite you to the clacky fest in october in spain jay dude i would love to come but i've got so many i've got so many meetups to go to this year so we did the uk one last month i'm in i'm in the usa from the 1st of August to the 5th of August for the Morgantown Meetup at Novel Keys headquarters. I'm in the Netherlands for ClackyCon um, in September. And then, not for a keyboard, but I'm back in America in October for a family holiday. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of trips coming up. I've got a lot of trips coming up. Um, so yeah, I need to get some my period. Dude, I'm trying not to drink fizzy drinks. I'm so trying to stay away from fizzy drinks. So trying to stay away from fizzy drinks. So yeah, so we'll we'll see, do it on. But uh, it depends on when in September, uh, when in October, the Clacky Fest is, because we're back in the USA from the sixth of October to the. Hold on, let me check. July, August, September, October. Uh, oh, we fly on the fourth of October, and we're back on the nineteenth of October. So I'm in the US from the fourth to nineteenth. Um, looking at my diary. So yeah, so just over two weeks. Yeah, looking forward to that though. It'll be good. October 5th, yeah, I, there's no chance of me getting to Spain and then getting over to, to the US, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Sorry. I would love to do it. Maybe we can come next year. Maybe we can come next year. Right, okay, let's get back on to 
<laughs> We've been streaming for like an hour. I haven't even shown you guys the keyboard I'm building today. So this is the Thesis 75 from Haverworks. Um, I'm not sure if uh, the designer is watching right now, um, but this is kind of like, to me, this is the daddy of split 75s. Like there have been quite a few 75s on the market. There've been a few split 75s, such as the VEA. This to me feels like the daddy of all split 75s we should get some daddy emotes in chat if we have one i don't know if we have one but we should um so yeah so this is uh, this is the first time i've opened this it looks like there's a load of stuff in the top here so let's take a look let's see what we've got we have cables so we have a cable oh interesting the cable's green that's kind of like a a greeny color it's like a like an aloe green it's like the aloe board there's two uh, one cable there one cable oh there's a couple of knobs here there's two knobs on this board. Should we take a look at the board before I show you it? Um, so if you look on the website, we have this in group by isn't it right now. Let's have a look at this. Where is it? Theseus 75 keyboard kit. So this is the Theseus 75. It's a dual knob split keyboard that has a knob on both sides. And it has a macro column on the left as well. So this is the keyboard we're building today. Look how beautiful it is. I wonder if we have got the green version. It's an absolutely stunning keyboard. Looks great in all of the colors. Blue with panels looks phenomenal. Has uh, input and output ports on the back as well, which look great. There you go. Also it has, uh, look, Limo connectors and USB-C. Limo connectors to connect the two halves together and USB-C for power. It's kind of nuts. Mm. And look at these colors. Look at that for a color, that burgundy red, the black. Hold on, might be easier if I just do this. Oh, they're not set to change. Okay. Look at that. Looks so good. Fake limo? Yeah, well, so yeah, okay, sure. Purple as well. Looks good. Looks really good. Okay. Still one nil on the football. We have two knobs. Uh, these are polished, look like brass. Put them to one side. We have two different types of mounts. So these are kind of like gasket to mounts. They're very similar to like um, burger mount parts, but these are in two different um, uh, kind of strengths. We've got the blue ones, which I think are 58, and the purple ones are 78. Might be the other way around. I'll check in a minute. Uh, but basically, the hardness of them is so how much they compress. One is 50 a durometer, the other one is 78. So there we go. Hand polished raw bronze. Oh, these are bronze. That's really cool. Hand polished raw bronze. Let's take a look at one of these. Ruh. Still nil nil. It's one nil to Spain, tank house. Oh, look at these. These are stunning. Look at that. Let's do the let's do the face kit. Look at that for a knob. It's got a giant fingerprint on it from me, but hand polished. Special knobs for Jay. <laughs> oh, that does make me chuckle. Big fan of that already. Okay, what else have we got? We've got a pack of screws and standoffs for the PCBs and plates. Depending on what plate we've got, we might not need those. We've got the hardware for the fixing of the uh, of the knobs here. So spare screws and an Allen key. Ribbon cable for each side. Ribbon cables are my nightmare on this stream. They're my nemesis on this stream. Because the stream lights are so bright and I have to dumb down what you see here from a brightness perspective, I really struggle to see under the bright lights what I'm doing with ribbon cables. But we'll see. We have the Flemo connectors for the internal parts, which should be quite interesting. There we go. Oh, we've got another cable here as well with the flemos on as well. Oh, they, these look good. Look at that, polished. They look really good. Keep them covered up for now. You can pick which, uh, I think the green one's got black on it, look, yeah. Mm, oh, they're not, no, that's not black. That's a dark green. I think we've got the green keyboard here, guys, because that's, this is green on green. It looks stunning. Let's see. Love a hand polish knob. Everybody likes a hand polished. I don't think who you are. Okay, 
We have our PCBs. Now, this looks like one PCB. It's actually two, as you can see from the big gap down the middle. Uh, the knobs have pierced through. There we go. So we do have to do a little bit of uh, snippy snapping. We've got two boards, one for each side, and we have to do some snapping of this piece and this piece to be able to take it apart. But it's nice that they're all produced in one. I really, really like that from a, a design perspective. Um, all sorts of stuff on here about the design. PCB was designed by eBassler. I didn't know that, but is a great guy. So yeah, so we'll take a look at that shortly. And then it looks like we have plate here. A knob with the SBC logo on it. Carbon fiber. Universal layer carbon fiber. This is the right hand side. And this looks like the left hand side. It's really nice that they've got the detail. These are uh, chamfered, so you can have flush screws put in them. What else have we got in here? This looks like a foam pack. So we've got a pack full of foams. There is so many foams here. You guys will have to tell me in chat, do you think we should use all the foams or not? So there's individual foam pads for switches and also individual foam pads for all of the stabilizers as well. Well, for some switches, I'm gonna guess it's the ones that aren't covered by this actual pack here. We have, please use the foams, okay. Left and right foams. Left and right PE foam sheet as well. There is a lot of foams in this build. That's not a bad thing. Okay, cool. So that's that. Let's take a look at the build and see which keyboard we've got. So this is split into two halves. I'm going to assume that these are wrapped individually. Yeah, it looks like these are wrapped individually. So let's take these out. Ugh. Build the two halves differently. No. Oof. It is the green. Look at that, milled polycarbonate base. Look at that. That green is something to behold. Magnets to pull the two halves together. What a color. What a color that is. That's one half. Let's get the other half out. Oh, I'm stuffed. Guys. Oh. Oh, we have a little note here. Jay, thanks for being a part of this project. Alex, on one of the stickers. That's really cool. Thank you so much, Alex. I appreciate that. Oof. The green with the polycarb. Wow. Guys, look at this. Look at this. Oh, I thought it might hold. It doesn't quite hold, but look at that. Look at that for anodization matching as well. I thought it was going to hold two bits together. It won't, but it'll keep it flush on the desk nicely. Look at that. That is absolutely stunning. Wow. Okay. Let's get rid of the uh, the case. I think. I think we saw the feet are already installed on this. We'll check in a second. Ah, yeah, feet are already installed. That's good. Um. Mm -mm -mm. Tasty, tasty. So the case is just held together with a couple of screws. So we're going to take those screws out so we can assemble everything correctly. Uh, I think we need this size. One up. Oh, this is too small. One up from that. Yeah. Okay. Still one nil on the football, so no discount as yet. Empty my tray so I can put the screws I'm using today in it. 
What are the tolerances like? Can you see the split language together? Uh, hold on, we'll take a look. Hold that thought. I mean, I think you will be able to see the split line to some extent, no matter how fine the tolerances are, unless, you, <laughs> unless you're going to wire EDM it. So there you go. That's kind of like what you're going to see from where you are. I mean, the split line is, is obviously there, but it's pretty smooth. Like, you can barely feel it. The tolerance is really good. Like, it's, it's there, but, you know. It's not something you're ever going to notice in real life usage. This would be a good board to mix and match colors for each harp. Maybe. You could do some fun builds. Don't break it before we even start to assemble. Don't worry, don't worry. Looks so good, it looks really good. The polycarb fits really tightly actually, that's quite a nice tolerant, tolerant fit. All milled out with a little pocket for their cables at the back there. And then this top case. One of the things that's actually really difficult to do with split boards like this is keep these elements straight. Quite often what you see is that these have actually got a slight bow to them, they're either bow out or bow in, so bow out or bow in, because it's really difficult to kind of like machine like this kind of thing and keep that rigid. And there's always going to be some flex in them. So the fact that these are tolerances are so spot on is pretty impressive. It means they've actually slowed down the milling and they've taken care and time, or they've got a decent fixture that holds it from both the outside and from the inside. Uh, and they're doing the first operation by milling out the inside of the part here um, and then milling out these kind of areas afterwards. So just a lot to think about when you're making a keyboard like this and how you actually have it produced. But that looks pretty good. So there we go. So that's the keyboard itself. Looks fantastic in that color. All joined together. I'm just gonna to tuck that to one side. I'm just gonna tuck that there. Because next job is to actually start to build and assemble the PCB plates and everything else. So we'll use the foams today because we were asked to use the foams. So let's do that. Um, let's take this apart. So we're gonna snap the PCB and plate off here. Just to be gentle with these it will snap quite easily but you don't want to go too hard just like that just like so and then we can just gently prise down prise back up take off one pcb take off the other pcb and the two daughter boards that we need for this are attached here as well so we'll take them off as well what happens to the milled aluminium? So when you mill aluminium, it basically becomes chips. So if you're starting off with like a lump of aluminium like this, um, let's uh, separate these two parts, I'll show you. So if this started off as like a piece of aluminium, it would have been completely square. So if you imagine that this triangle here would be still part of it. And what you would probably do for this, I mean, it depends on how the design is actually made and stuff, and I'm, I'm not thinking about this too deeply, but effectively you would create a channel in here and you drill out all of the middle section. So you can see if you look at it this way, all of this kind of area here has been milled away. So this side is a solid block and it's all been milled away. That would become chips, tiny thin strands of aluminium, tiny little chips. Um, and that will be then recycled by the manufacturer usually. So they will do something like that. But it's basically just called Schwarf and it's kind of like, um, it's like sawdust but from aluminium. It's that kind of equivalent. Okay, so we have our two daughter boards. We have our two PCBs. And then we have all of our foams and everything else. So let's put the PE sheets on first. And then we're gonna grab some stabilizers and put some stabilizers into the boards. Now, would you like to build this ISO or ANSI? I don't know if any mods are watching, but if any mods are watching, can we get a poll up and you can vote whether you want to build this ISO or ANSI today? Well, I get some stabilizers really. I don't know if any mods are actually watching. <laughs> 
Chips used to collect it together and recycle. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. We've got a poll up. You guys vote in the poll and a vote to let me know whether you'd like to see this build be ISO or ANSI today. I'm going to grab some stabilizers. This is my little stabilizer collection. Okay. Let's figure out what we need from a stabilizer perspective today. So, should have enough uh, stabilizers here to make something up. Let's see what we need. There's some pretty good QMXs here. I don't want those, so. Right, let's get these out of the way. So we're going to need a stabilizer for backspace because we're going to put a full backspace in. You guys need to tell me whether you're going to vote for ISO or ANSI today. It looks like we're going for ISO, so I'm going to prep on that basis. We need a stabilizer for ISO ANSI. That's two. Um, we're going to probably use split right shift, right? Yeah. So we've got one for ANSI and so okay. We're gonna need one for left space bar, one for right space bar, so we need another two. That's those. Okay. And then Depends on whether we got ANSI or ISO, whether we're going to need another shift key or not. I'm going to grab out enough parts to do that, and then we can decide, depending on what you guys vote for, whether we need it or not. Okay, that's that. Grab some screws, because we'll need some screws on some washers. We might need two packs, so I'll grab two packs, just so we can get what we need. And then we're going to need some wires. So we need one, two, three, four. And we need five wires at least. Four. There we go. What's your take on the Norbao Stab project? I think it's a really clever idea. Um, it's a very good engineering challenge. I've been a proponent of looking at um, uh, compliant mechanisms for stabilizers for a number of years now. Um, Norbao doesn't quite go down the route of, of um, compliant mechanisms, but he kind of touches on it as well, which is quite good, so yeah. Um, I think it's a great idea. I don't know if they'll work in practice in terms of the price. I'm hoping to try some while I'm in the States, but we'll see. We'll see. Can the hot swap do ISO or is it just a solder? That's a good question. I don't know off the top of my head. If you make ISO, you only need four steps. Can save a loop one. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, we don't need as many if we do ISO. But it depends on what the people vote for. So get your votes in, guys, because the vote's there. Okay, time to grab some tools because we're going to need some tools now. So I am going to need a soldering iron. I'm going to need some solder. I'm going to need some flush cutters, a switch puller, tweezers. We need a brush for our lube, which we have just there. There we go. Let's create some space because it's getting quite busy on the desk right now. I'm going to start looming these stabilizers because we've we've got a long way to go on the build. Vote ISO for England. Yeah. Something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assemble the housings first and you'll see how I loop those in a second. So I'm just putting the sliders inside the housings. This is the way I've been looming stabilizers for the past 10 years or more. No more points left. <laughs> I tell you what, once this is finished and you've picked, um, we will we'll do the next marbles round actually. Technically ISO for Spain as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. ISO is very much uh, a European thing. Damn it. <laughs> Hmm. 
one one. Oh, I don't see that. My my the stream I'm watching must be behind. It shows one nil to. Uh, I see seventy one minutes forty nine seconds. So I don't see a goal for England yet. All right. Okay. It looks like it's about to happen. I'm gonna watch now because it's about to happen. Yeah. Okay. Just the outside of the box. Squeeze through. Shot from the outside. It's in. Yeah. Well. Okay. So. Before we carry on with stabilizers, ISO did win, so we're going to build an ISO layout. But before we carry on with that, it's time to do a discount for the stream. So let me let me do this. There's now 10%, there's going to be 10% off on in-stock items. So let me log in and get that ready for you. <laughs> I think I was like a minute behind. Uh, right, discounts. Let's create a new discount. Create discount. Amount of products. Discount code. Okay, I'll tell you what the code is in a second. It's going to be 10% off inst all in-stock items. You have to buy at least one item. You can only use it once, and it will end at the end of this stream. Okay, there we go. So, here is the code. Uh, let me give a link for that as well. Do, 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 do. Okay, cool. There you go. That is the code. I'm going to pin that as well. So you can use England Stream 10. That's the code uh, for 10% off any Instagram. Bear in mind, I've spent England as Ingerland. Um, that's just a silly thing that we do here in the UK. So yeah. You see, he must have a foot like a tragedy. He was going, wasn't it? Yeah. Why do Brits take off shirts for football? Super weird. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I take my shirt off like to go in the swimming pool and that's it. So I don't know. Yeah. So there's the code. Um, you can get 10% off anything in the stock right now um, because England have scored. And it's 1-1. One, one. There you go. So we'll increase that to 20% if England score again. So I'm keeping an eye on it. But yeah, there we go. Right. Okay. Before we do the before we do these stabilizers, before we lube them up, let's do the next uh, let's do the next race because we have got quite a few races to go. So here we go. If you want to be in an exclamation mark play, remember the more races you are in, the better, and you can join for this next race. So this will be race number four. We've got six more to go after this one. This will be race number four. And then we'll get these stabilizers looped afterwards. This is going to be a really long stream today. Instead of finish at like 11, we're going to finish at midnight, I'm pretty sure. Okay, guys, come on. If you want to be in the race, there's 180 of you viewing. Why are people dropping off the stream when, you know, we're giving away a cycle eight today of all things? Okay, I'm going to hit start. You've got 10 seconds to go. Get yourselves in the race, guys. Exclamation mark play will put you in. Because I've got so much stuff on my desk, I'm having to really stretch out to, re to reach my keyboard now. Here we go. Let's see who's going to get some points on this one. It looks like Katumbas is in the lead uh, with Lazy Keiko not too far behind. Oh, it's all changed now. Nimble. There. Oh, God, I don't even know. I can't even tell who's in the lead. Alex OP is there, but Gouty is down on his way back up. Conan is there as well. Ebasta's kind of in the middle of the pack somewhere. Uh, I'm there right at the back as well. Lots of people are going up through these steps here. Um, I don't like these dark maps because it's almost impossible to tell what's going on. Uh, right, Avalone. Nimble Machine right there at the very front. Gemma's there as well on that row, I think. I can't quite see, but I think Gemma's there too. Yeah, Gemma is in there as well. Um, where are we going to go after this? It looks like we're going to follow the line here down. This is so impossible. I have no idea what actually happening. There we go. Down the zip line. Flying off up into the next section and down into the ball. Gemma and Toasty Baps are there. Gemma was going for all 10 races DNF, but it looks like she's not going to manage that because she's uh, she's doing quite well here. Um, coming down the spiral now, lots of people are already making their way down into the spiral. Funny Books is dead. Rack is dead. 8th 8th is dead. Pearl and Merlin's doing better this round. Instead of pausing at the back, she's halfway through this track, so she's doing okay for now. Lots of people. It's just raining balls here. People are just dying left, right, and center. It's raining marbles. Um, 
Yeah, La La Blah is dead. Nono Spike is dead. The Unborn Sacred Shapes is dead. JMS is dead. Rue is dead. Gemma has got a massive lead though here. Look at Gemma go. There we go. Exist is there as well. Chasm Line as well. Uh, Gembalex is there too. Perlin's coming around as well. Still a long way to go to the end. So anyone could still win this. Gemma looks like she's got stuck in the ball of death. Probably isn't going to be first out. Oh no, she is first out and she's off on her way. There we go. And who is that? That's Exist but gets stuck. Zinnick the Hole gets stuck as well. Chasm Line is through. Alex OP is there. Uh, Jumblex is there as well. He's just dropped right down. Did he, did he die or did he make it through? I think he must have died. Alex OP is there. Gemma's already going through all of these. It looks like she's got the win in the bag, depending on the rest of the track here. Still places where she could die, but it might be the win in the bag. Nimble Machine's there as well. Exist is still making his way through. Skimson was flying along and then just suddenly stopped, but there's lots of places still to catch up here. I'm still right at the back there. I can see my pink name. Uh, a Books New York is in there as well. Ink Rabbit there too. Alex OP and Gemma coming through here, but Lamblex and Casey in skirt. Alex got stuck there, but so lots of people dropping down. Looks like Casey has died. Gemblex is on his way through as well. Who's going to make it out of here first? It looks like it's going to be Gemma. Captain Reed's there as well. Remember, you don't win a prize for this race. You've got to get prizes across the whole thing, but it looks like Cynic 12 and Exist 1746 just dropped through the track and stole the win away from Gemma right there at the end. They fell off the top but managed to fall into the pot and uh, took a first and a second. Gemma comes third, Gemlex comes fourth, Nufi comes fifth, Alex OP comes sixth, Ballboy comes seventh, True Blaze comes eighth, Nimble Machine and Stilouette come ninth and tenth. So there we go. That is race four completed. Six more races to go. Uh, lots of people still making it down. Some people dying, some people not. I died just there. I saw myself dying with Mr. Gimp. Um, yeah, stolen, stolen win uh, from Gemma right at the end. Cynic 12 and Exists uh, did take the uh, the first two spots just by sheer luck falling down from the top. Uh, so there we go. That is race four completed. Let's wait for the results and then we'll carry on with the build. You finally finished one. Yeah, no win or a t-shirt. Such is life. Zizora's coming up. There we go. Okay, so final results then. Cynic12 came first. Exists came second. Gemma came third. Uh, let's check and see who got 69th. No one got 69th because they were all dead. Um, loads of people died on this one. So there we go. That is how the cookie crumbled on that particular race. Okay, so... Uh, we'll do some more races in a bit. It's time to carry on with the build of the Theseus and we are just about to put our stabilizers together and lubricate them all up nicely. I'm not going to put the... Um, I, I really don't like using the switch pads personally, so I'm not going to put these on the board today, but you can if you're building it yourself. With the PE sheet and everything else, I think it's going to be more than fine. I think the stabilized keys tend to sound better without the PE sheet under them, so let's not do the, the, the whole putting switch things down for individual ones. Let's just leave it as it is. We'll put the stabilizers in the board and then we'll build the board with the rest of the thumbs from there. Okay. Dead is finally finished one. To be honest, I've started leaving them off too. Yeah, I, like, I, I just think stabilized keys sound better without them. So yeah, but that's just my personal preference. So we're just gonna lube up the stabilizer wires here. Still 1-1 one, one from the football, so no more discount. But you've got 10% on anything in stock, unless England score again, in which case you can get 20% off. Or if they score again after that, you get 30% off. Up to a maximum of 40% if England score four goals. If, it's, uh, if it goes to penalties, I don't know what's going to happen then. We'll have to figure that out when we get to it. I don't have a, a way of handling that yet. So we're going to start lubricating our stabilizer wires and then we're going to install them in the housings and then we'll lubricate the housings up afterwards. So we're just going to lubricate all of these up first. So this is 205 grade uh, zero. This is the thickest of the 205s. I like this for both switches and stabilizers, but your mileage may vary. I know a lot of people prefer the um, BDZ, but I, th I find that a little bit too thick for good stabilizers, personally. We order and you pay for us ordering if it ends in penalties. Technically, any discount is me paying for you to order. Because you're not paying full price. So I'm paying if you order with any discount, right? Just gonna paint the sides of the slider rail here gently, delicately, both sides. Just a very thin amount. Not trying to come up to work, just trying to lubricate it nicely. And then into the rear, we're just going to put a small piece of lubricant. We're going to get a small piece on the end of the brush. We're just going to push that in where the wire shows at the back. Make sure it's all nice and flush. And on the other 
side as well. And that's one done. And then we're going to move on and do the next one. Fair. <laughs> yeah. Like, I remember when we did the discount for the PT birthday. We did like a 40 minutes, 40% 40 off sale. And it was literally just because it was PT's fourth birthday. So I did fourth birthday, 40 minutes, 40%. 40 and I remember my accountant phoning me the next day. And he's like, dude, <laughs> what the hell happened yesterday? Why was there so many big discounts given? And he, he gave me a bit of a lecture and he was like, this is what you would have earned if you'd have had the price up at full price. I'm like, yeah, but we wouldn't have had as many sales, Mr. Accountant. And he was like, okay, you would have had this number of sales irrespective based on what we normally see on the account. And he was like, even with the normal number of sales, the extra sales didn't actually generate any additional revenue. And you made a loss of this overall. I was like, okay, thanks. That was a difficult conversation to have. But it was, it was the right thing for the customers. It was the right thing for the customers. <clears throat> the My accountant is actually coming to visit me on Wednesday this week. Um, I'll see if I can get him to be in an Insta video. He probably won't, but I'll see if I can. Uh, he usually comes once a year to shout at me when we're doing our annual results. And <laughs> it's it's always the most uncomfortable day of the year for me. Um, so, yeah. I'm not looking forward to that this week. Because um, it's usually a case of, Jay, why did you make this decision? Why did you make that decision? And it's like, I have to justify doing things for the community versus actually having a good business brain. And it's like, it, it's a very difficult concept to get to someone who doesn't actually use any of our products and understand how the market works. So it's always a fun time. There's an equation for profit? What? <laughs> Buy low, sell high, right? Yeah. Like, it's not just about making a profit sometimes as well. It's about the amount of profit you need to make gross to actually run a, a profit net as well. So there's a lot more than just one thing that goes into that. It's 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 not just a simple consideration. It will be different from business to business as well, and from sector to sector. But it's not as simple as like, you know, sell more than you buy for. It, that's just like a really simplified way of looking at it sometimes. Just the right board with stonk written on it. Instead of spending on marketing, you spend on keeping customer base with kindness. Yeah, I mean, we don't do any marketing. That is going to have to change, I think, over the next 18 months. Uh, we are going to have to start doing some marketing. Like in the past five years, PT has been going five years on the 1st of November, right? Uh, which is kind of crazy. Half a decade. Like I was, in, I was in my early 30s when I started PT. I'm now nearly 40. Um, it's kind of crazy. And one of the things we are going to have to start doing is doing a bit of advertising, I think. Um, just because it's something we don't do. And when we look at the opportunity from if we did do some advertising and letting people know about the products we have at any given time. Um, like it's fine doing the streaming and the Discord notifications, but that notifies like maybe 5% of our customer base. So I think one of the things we're gonna look at is like a, a fortnightly email blast. I don't wanna be one of those companies like Drop where you get an email every five hours. It needs to be kind of like thought out and planned and all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I think we're going to move to that kind of model. Go for Spain. Oh, no, don't tell me that. I'm glad you're doing it. I don't have to bother with that. Sounds very painful to deal with the, all the economic parts of being a shop. Dude, like, the, the considerations we have to have for, like, rent, um, gas, electricity, water providers, insurance is massive. Insurance is huge. Um, we have like a, a tax on businesses here in the UK called business rates as well. We have to pay for that. Of course, the staff costs to pay for, which includes pension schemes and sick pay and holiday pay and all of that kind of stuff. And it, it, it's just an absolute nightmare to, uh, I've just seen the second goal happen um, from Spain. It's just an absolute nightmare to manage all of it. And whilst I'm relatively good at that kind of stuff, I don't enjoy it. So I think my accountant gets a little bit frustrated with me for not doing that kind of stuff and concentrating on the stuff that I really enjoy such as designing and making new keyboards um, so yeah bloody insurers I know right 
PT plane and monthly sign ratings. Dude, no. I couldn't afford that. Like, we aim for between overall, across all the stuff that we do, we aim for between like a 5 to 15% profit margin. Because, uh, of course, we have to pay designers' fees and everything else. That's kind of, One of the biggest costs we have each year is designer fees, um, insurances, and staffing costs. Like, they're the big... Um, the big three things then rent would be fourth so yeah it becomes difficult when you're not just responsible for your own mortgage and house payments but you're responsible for other people's as well um like trying to make sure you've got enough work for them and stuff like it's it, it's quite worrying it's difficult it's not an easy thing to do so props to anyone who has their own business because it's uh, it's a difficult thing to manage just on an emotional capacity level as well. It's not easy. You're always gonna make decisions that your staff aren't gonna agree with, and that's hard to manage as well, you know. There's times when Mel and Sharon and Josh will absolutely disagree with decisions I've had to make from a business perspective. Same with designers as well. There'll be often decisions we make as a business that designers won't agree with in terms of how we do things. And we have to make those decisions for business reasons. And, you know, sometimes they're gonna be popular, sometimes they're not. And that becomes a difficult thing to manage as well. Um, because people are going to have their own thoughts and opinions on why you've done it. And the thing is, like, I will always be 100% open. So if anyone ever asks me why I've made a decision, I'll tell them. Including you guys. Including you guys. You know, I, I won't ever shy away from that. Because the worst thing I see is, like... Or the most one of the most frustrating things I see is... I'll make a decision for PT. And it will be based on a thousand different one factors. And I'll see people in Discord servers or whatever criticize me for making that decision. And they're like, oh, Jay made this decision. It's a terrible decision. Why is he making that decision? And so they don't know what goes into it. But rather than just ask me, which they can absolutely do, um, and I would tell them the truth. I'd tell them the exact reasons. I have nothing to hide. Um, they just then decide that I'm a bad person for making that decision without any of the context. And then that becomes their truth. And that's a difficult thing to accept sometimes. But sadly, there is nothing I can do to change that. So if you're ever interested in why I've made a decision on something, just ask. And I'll try and be as open as I can with you guys. <sighs> Plus 10% discount for Spanish addresses every time they're school. Uh, no, I'm not a cruel person. I'm not a cruel person. I like the Spanish folks. They're always good. I'll probably... <laughs> If Spain win, I'll probably get a message off them boom on tomorrow telling me that Spain have won. I'm, I'm thoroughly expecting that. There's still... There's still a minute left. But I think England are going to lose now. I think England are going to lose. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Four minutes of extra time it's showing me. So you guys are probably going to see the end and the final result before I see it. So Because I've got a slight delay on the stream I'm watching on iPlayer. But it is what it is. I do feel like England would have won if I had not watched it. Like, I feel like that was something that would have happened. <laughs> Almost a second. Oh, man. I haven't seen that yet. Oh. No, I've still not seen that. It was going that way with the ball, but it's out for throwing a minute on my screen. Okay, so that's all of our stabilizers lubed and uh, ready to go in the board. So let's install these now. So I'm just going to pop these into place. some screw for me. Uh, if I can actually hold on to these screws. 
Uh, what would you recommend, have a snail? What would you, what do you guys think for, for the stabilizers? Um, in fact, why am I putting that in there? We're doing ISO. That needs to be split. Uh, that needs to be in the space bar. What would you recommend? Let's take a look at how we can build this. So I've got the build guide up here. Let me share this with you guys. This is the build guide. Let's take a look and see what the options are for the front. Where does it show us the options for layouts? It doesn't. Does it show us in there? In here. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's take a look. So I think we do 1.25, I think we do this bottom right here, right? 1.25s and then a 2.25 and then a 1.25. I think we stick with that exact bottom row and then a 2.75 here. I think we stick with that exact bottom row. That feels like the, the right call here. Yeah, that feels like the right call. Okay, so uh, if we're going to go with space here, it's been the first or the second set, Mr. Habersnell. I feel like it's going to have to be, oh, I've got it all the way around. I think it's going to have to be in the first one, right? Yeah, leftmost, yeah, I thought so. There we go. So that's where our space bar is going to go. Let's grab a screwdriver. We'll pop the screw down for this side here. Oh, you guys can't see because I'm showing the build guide. Oops. I'm just screwing in the stabilizer here. And spend one. Yeah. It's still it's like at 93 minutes 45 seconds on my screen, so I'm I'm a little behind. Yeah, doesn't surprise me. I, I I kind of figured Spain would win, but hey, there's a ten percent discount on the store on anything in stock. So because England scored one goal, so there you go. The football is not coming home, not for this tournament anyway. Perhaps for the next one. You know, England have been doing really well overall recently, so compared to historically. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn off the stream now. There we go. I don't need that one. There we go. Cool. Southgate out. Southgate's the kind of like, why would Southgate be sacked after that, right? Think about this. When was the last time England got to the final of any major competition, right? It was at the Southgate. The, you know, he's probably the most successful manager we've had since the 60s. So why why would Southgate be out? I don't I, I saw this mentality on Reddit the other day. I'm like, oh, Southgate, he's, he's rubbish, he's rubbish. We, we're never going to win. Like, But he's had more success or come closer to success than any other England manager for decades. Half a competent manager could have won more things. You think? That's that's an impossibility to prove, though, right? That, you can't prove that. So that's just a, a good feel. Good in spite, not because of. Yeah... I'm not, I'm not sure I can agree with that kind of mentality. You can't Incredible. say that... Incredible. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult to argue that um, an eventuality would have happened if something had, if someone would have been different. Like, I just don't like those types of arguments. It's kind of like a round rhetoric, and it's just not, it's not fair. Like, you know. Like, you could say Lewis Hamilton would have won more races if he'd been in the Red Bull the last two years. Would he? Do we know that? Can we prove it? Does it matter? You know. Like, the, it, it's impossible to prove a negative, so... I don't like arguments like that. It just feel, it feels cheap sometimes. Oh yeah, I agree. England barely got off the line in truly some, in some truly good four games, but you know, the results are what count at the end of the day. So, <laughs> I feel like I've annoyed people. 
It's a problem with the manager or the workers. It depends. That depends on your perspective. And Jax would have shipped Rookie Ra too if, uh, dude, if England had won tonight. Dude, Jax, Jax is never coming back. Someone said to me on stream a couple of months ago, like, do we think Jax is ever going to ship Rookie Ra too? And the, the answer is a blunt no. Like, that, that shit's just not happening. That shit is just not happening. He is he's not coming back to the hobby. And, yeah. That's not happening. So, right. We did loop an extra stabilizer because we didn't... Because um, I was an idiot. But, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I was just an absolute idiot. And even though you guys had already picked ISO, I looped an extra one because I could. And I shouldn't have done, but it's fine. The green is fantastic. It is it is so good. I didn't know what colour I'd got until I opened it up. I, I kind of suspected I'd got green, but I didn't know until I opened it up because I opened it up live for the first time on the stream. Um, so I did kind of pick like a couple of green sets just in case I had got that. But I kind of tried to pick sets that would go with any colour, so... This is the last stabilizer we need to install here. So we're just installing the ISO enter because you guys picked ISO build for today. So that is our stabilizers installed. Oh, we've got one spare. Let me pop that to one side. That's a big dupe. There we go. Okay. Next job then is to put the foams in place because we said we we're going to use all the foams on this build. And then we can attach the PCB and plate together using the standoffs. I'm just going to lay that down. That is the correct orientation for it. And then I'm going to lay this side down. And then in one of the packs we have the screws that hold everything together. That's a knob. Here we go. More foams? Yeah. My football was a disappointment. That was a bit of a twist. Now to pay some attention to something fun. Well, I'm glad you find me building a keyboard fun, good sir. Um, I always aim to please. So what we're going to do first is we are going to install the standoffs into, in fact, actually, do you know what? I'm going to take these foams out and put the standoffs in first, and then we'll put those foams back in. Just, just from a complexity point of view. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the standoff in place. I'm going to hold it down in place with my thumb. And we're going to put the screw in from the base, and we're going to tighten that up with the screwdriver. Make sure you use the correct screws here. Send us something they needed for the soft plates and the hot spot. Yeah, okay. I just feel like if we're going to use them, let's use them. We've got carbon fiber plates, so it should be okay. But we'll just put them in. We'll put four in for each side. Or three in for each side, whatever it needs. Three, I think. I appreciate that they're uh, usually used for the soft plates, but it's a nice thing to do if we can. There we go. That's three installed on that side. In fact, should we put the fourth one in? We might as well do the fourth one as well whilst we are here. Just trying to not use the uh, countersunk screws. side do, do, do. I have 
have to be slightly ambidextrous here. That did not go to plan. There it is. I thought I dropped it, but I hadn't dropped it. I feel like my thumb has moved off this one, so I might have to do a little bit of angling. There we go. Oh, we seem to have trapped the PE sheet. Let's just undo that fraction. Free up the PE sheet and then screw it back in. Okay. What sort of colour key set do you guys think I've picked for this? Because I had to pick blind because I hadn't checked the colour of the board prior to starting the stream. So I did pick some hoping that I'd have green. I picked five key sets that you guys can choose from later on. But what sort of colours do you think we should have gone for here? Come on, Jack. Come on. It's a screw. You can screw this in. Really what super user? I'll give you a I'll give you a clue. I have gone for all GMK sets. Okay, one more to go. Carbon or ski data, dig deep in that collection. Neither of those are out, I'm afraid. Okay, that's all of those put in place. We're now going to need eight of the countersunk screws. So I'm just going to count those out. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we can put the countersunk screws in from the top through the carbon fiber plate, and that will hold everything together. Rest of the spare screws in here. We're going to need these silver screws that I'm putting away now for the case when we get to it. Okay, so now we've done that, we can add the foams back in. We can reintroduce the foams. And that gives us some more anchor points as well, just to make sure everything is lined up correctly. There we go. And then we can put the plates on top. There we go, okay, and then from an alignment perspective, we can just put these in and tighten them down, and that should give us a nice base to put the switches in from. Fleurice, do you know, I wish I'd bought a set of Fleurice myself. I didn't, and I don't have a set of it. I wish I did. Botanical looks good with the green. Botanical is one of the sets I've chosen actually for today. That's one of the sets you'll be able to pick from later on. Uh, what else have I got? Botanical, Ursa, Olive, Camping, and a beige set, Retro Arabic, because everybody loves a bit of Retro Arabic. Point you in the direction of the renders? Sure, yeah, there's a Geekhack thread, or you can have a look on the PC website. Okay, as soon as I've uh, done this, we'll, we'll start the next race, which will be race number five out of ten. And we'll do another race towards winning the cycle seven. So for those of you guys who have just joined us after the football, we're doing a 10 race Grand Prix uh, to give away a cycle eight. Sorry, not cycle seven, a cycle eight. Um, so yeah, feel free to join in those. Waves could have been cool. Yeah, I do have a set of waves actually, but I didn't pick it out for this. So next race then, if you do exclamation mark play, that will put you into the race. 
and this is for race five out of ten so you can join now it doesn't matter if you're joining late or you've already missed some this is an opportunity for you to win a cycle eight keyboard fully built just no keycaps you'll need to add your own keycaps As soon as about 85 of you are in, I'm going to hit play, and then you'll have about 10 seconds to start joining. Okay, I'm going to hit start now, and let's see who is going to get some more points towards the cycle eight. Three, two, one, and away we go. Let's see who's going to make it down into the bowl of death first. It looks like Alex OP is there at the front. Uh, all a mass. It's impossible to tell who's in the lead. Mr. Gimp has the lead. Mr. Gimp. There we go, in the lead. Tasty Tasty, thank you so much for the sub, I appreciate that. Cairo is going round. Ball Boy is there. KC Inns is there. Poship is there as well. Jelly Master is going through as well. La La Blah is there too. Mr. Gimp definitely has a big lead though. Ball Boy's coming through and Croyo is there as well. Jelly Master is right in the middle. La La Blah is taking up the back of the pack there with Anarchy right in the middle. Mr. Gimp has got quite a big lead though as we come around and down the shark's mouth. Let's see if he's going to be the first one in there, only one in there. Creon Ball Boy are just behind. Stilouette is just not too far behind as well. Uh, e Basler is there too. I'm ADM and McMara is dead. Down they go, Mr. Gimp through the, throat, the shark's gullet. Here we go. Uh, Ball Boy is catching up. Mr. Gimp's going round the spiral. Still a long way to go though to the end of the stream. Uh, it's the end of the race, sorry. Uh, lots of obstacles left to come. Jelly Master's catching up a little bit, it looks like. E Basler's now in third. Rotator Quick is there as well. Stereo Jury is coming through. Uh, I'm right at the very back here. Look, I'm like in the last 10. Superhands is there as well. Uh, Enemushki is there too. Mr. Gimp has a good lead though. Ball Boy's not too far behind, but he's catching up slowly. Mr. Gimp dies. He's dead. Mr. Gimp is down and out. He was in the lead for a while, but he's now passed that mantle over to Ball Boy, who is on his way up here uh, and making his way down into the Wheel of Death. Look. Rotate Quick is there as well. E Bassler is now there. Loads of people just dying. Perlin, Merlin, Jelly Master, uh, Clownfish, Anarchy, Josh Joshio, all dying. Uh, oosh. World record. Ball Boy has got a new world record. He takes the win. Was he the only finisher? Was that the only finisher? Was Ball Boy the only person to finish that race? Let's have a look. Ball Boy and Rotate Quick were the only two people to finish. Wow. 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 Look at all those DNFs. <laughs> we had two finishes. That is race five done. And this is why I say it doesn't matter how many races you're part of. It's all to play for. You know. Hey, you've got to be in to win it. This is not going well. <laughs> DNF almost at the top. I made it. Oh, well. Okay. We'll do another race soon. Uh, let's carry on with the build. So, we now have the plates and PCBs all screwed together. So, we've got one nice sandwich of stuff. Uh, the PCBs are there. The um, PE foam is underneath. And, of course, we've got the in-between switch uh, and plate foam. Uh, sorry, the PCB and plate foam is all there. Next job is to put switches in and populate this all with switches. And uh, this is going to give us a really nice... Uh, build for this particular keyboard today. We are using alpaca switches. <clears throat> I love the amount of elimination maps. Helps even the odds too. Yeah, well, they were all picked at random, so yeah. Carbon fiber plate is gorgeous. It is. Carbon fiber is always good. So, let's start getting these switches in place. I feel like these are going to be really tight into this. Oh man. Did we mess up by picking these switches? Or is this, oh, this switch just isn't closed properly, that's all. Okay, I thought we'd messed up there. There we go. That switch was just not closed. Okay, so we're going to put all of these switches in place. Fill up the PCB in full. And then it'll be time to do some soldering. <laughs> How many Bible races have run this so, so far? That was race 5 of 10. So we've got another five races left to go. So you've still got plenty of time to win points to make up and become the winner of the cycle eight. Pokemon Kid, how's it going this fine Sunday evening? It's going well. I'm just sad that England lost the football. I was watching it on stream earlier. Whilst while streaming, I had it on in the corner. I'm hoping I have enough switches for this. I have a feeling we're going to be short. 
I did not count them, but it doesn't look like I have enough of this back. The higher you finish, the better points you get in a race. But don't worry, almost everyone's had at least two DNFs at the minute out of five races. So plenty of time still to win the points. Yeah, I'm not sure I have that number switches. <laughs> sports were played and sports were lost. Yeah. I'm 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 thoroughly expecting a message from Zambimon tomorrow telling me that Spain won the World Cup and that England are trash. I am a hundred percent expecting to get that. Okay, we might have to hand solder in the uh, ISO enter key in a minute because it's not particularly holding well into the plate and PCB, but that's more of a switch choice thing than anything else. And we can easily fix that when it comes to it. Shaco piece, five races have happened so far. There's five more races to go. Once we've got all the switches in place across both PCB and plate assemblies before we start soldering, we'll do the next race. Wait, does this one go the other way around? Oh, where does that not want to go in? How bizarre. Is this switch open as well? Ah, this switch is slow, but that's why. There we go. figure out what we're doing for the bottom rows as well. Mr. Haversnail, you said there was uh, something on the PCBs that I needed to ignore for the bottom row. So I might just grab some keycaps to make sure that we get that all correct. Some of these switches just aren't quite fully closed from when they're being lubed and filmed, but we can fix that quite easily. Hoping to have 90 switches. If not, we'll have to make some tough decisions. <laughs> I mean, I will have some switches that we can put in. They might just not be alpacas. Small book on the bottom left. If you stick to the left hand side of the cutouts, the mod should be okay. Okay. Tasty, tasty. That's a one new there. Is that what we said? Yeah, one new, one new. One new. There we go. There we go. That's going to be correct right there for the three one news. Okay, one side done. Let's put the switches in the second side. Thank you so much, Superhands, for the seven months of subs. What stabs are you using for this? These are just some generic stabilizers. I believe they're actually uh, Wook Studios ones, but we're using wires from QMX. So they're a little bit of a hodgepodge. They were just pulled out of my stash. Um, I wanted some black stabilizers just to uh, look nice with the carbon fiber. So that's what we went with. I have a, a toolbox full of stabilizers. There must be a thousand stabilizers in there. Maybe even more. Okay, I'm feeling a little bit more confident on the switch front now, but we might be a couple short. We'll see. We'll see where we get to. Citron Caramel, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you. Yes, at the bottom row needs to look like that. That feels right. <clears throat> I'm quite close to breaking my no more keeps in 2024 World Game. This thing is beautiful, dude. These are so good. These keep like the thing looks looks stunning. Like when we looked at the case earlier on, and you'll see when we assemble it later, it's just a phenomenal looking thing. Okay, 
Maybe maybe we are short on switches. Like it's looking like I don't have enough here, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll keep going and we'll see and just pray that we have enough switches. Pray for me, chat. Pray. Okay, this is getting really close and there's not many switches left. I think there's just enough. <laughs> it's getting close. Doesn't really count as a 2024 board if it delivers in 2025. Yeah, well, we could do that. We could do that. We could... Uh... Makamura, thank you so much for... For, for rating, I thank you very much. For, I think you rated. It says, I think it says you did. Um, thank you so much for being here either way. Uh, I think if you wanted, we could hold it off till 2025, even if we get them in 2024. I think it's 2024 money now. Is it really 2024 money if it arrives? And, oh, look, we're going to have a couple of switches left over here. Well, look at this. Look, look, look how close we cut this with the switches. We have two left over. Look how close we cut that with the switches. I did think it was a bit nerve wracking there. The small maid, no problem brother. Just go do some living. Nice man. Well, thanks for being here. I appreciate you. So there we go. That is the board all built up. And before we start soldering, we're going to do the next race on uh, the giveaway today. So we're going to do race number six. So uh, you guys can hit exclamation mark play and it'll put you in. And whilst you are getting in there, you didn't cut it close, you're just a professional. Thanks, I'll take that. I'll take that. You guys can join. I'm going to nip for another quick comfort break while you guys join for this race. And when I get back, I'm going to hit start straight away. And we're going to do race number six of ten for the cycle eight giveaway. Be back in just one minute, guys. Incredible. Okay, I'm back. We've got 98 people in this particular race. Let's hit start. And let's see how this one goes. 10 seconds left, guys, to join. If you want to be in it, you've got to be in it to win it. I don't know how this map works. Oh man, long way to go on this map. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, wow. Not quite sure what's happening here. It looks like Rabalski was first to drop down. Yeah, Rabalski is in first position. Nitram is just behind him. Or oh, everything is kind of slowing down. But 8th, 8th and Trojan are down. Let's see how we go into the first ball of death. Looks like Kiro is in the lead. Let's see who is going to be the first to come out. Cynic12 is the first person now. Ink Rabbit is there as well. So is Kojak. Katumbus is coming down behind. Jellymaster is there. So is Perlin Merlin. I'm still in the ball of death there. Casey Inscrider and V-Rug Drush is right at the back. Uh, really impossible to tell who is winning right now, but I think it's Cynic12. Ink Rabbit is there as well. Kojak is coming through a little bit faster. Elkino flops straight around the outside. He goes all the way around the outside and has a big, big lead as he goes into that pot. Where's he gone to? Alkino Flop is all the way over here. 
into the shark's mouth. Still some obstacles to go. Let's see if we can see anyone else coming over. Zakob, uh, Bartowski, Osculane, uh, Ebastler, Shadow Realm, Tanghouse, JQ, McNamara, Jellymaster, Banax, Kojak, Jellybabes, Perlin, Merlin. Loads of people flying across there. Uh, it looks like uh, Zaknob is uh, in first position though as we come down into this section. There I am coming down as well. Um, still a long way to go. Everyone could get stuck as we come around the spirals and into this last obstacle, the waves here right at the bottom. It looks like Ozkilane is there as well. Let's see if anyone can go around the outside and make it through as well. We'll see. Uh, lots still to play for. Lots of people just here all in the same space. Anarchy's there as well. So is Ryoki Barium's coming down. Running up the back. Nimble Machine is probably in last place right now, but everyone's in the same obstacle at the same time. Just about. So let's see who's going to make it through this waves obstacle first. It looks like Zakanova is going around the outside. They might still have a big enough lead to make it through into first place. Still a lot of long way to go. There's three different drops here. This could be the slowdown point. Just BMT could be there as well. No price for winning this particular one. But points are all adding up. Zikonob does take the win. Just BMT takes second. Framed might be taking third. We'll see. As ev everyone's stuck in here. Let's have a look top down view. Everyone is just stuck. Everyone is just taking their time, slowly working their way through. <laughs> Frame takes third. Elmano Rubishki takes fourth. Rufus takes fifth. Tango takes sixth. Ibasa takes seventh. Beepaphone takes 8th, Shadow Realm and uh, Exist take 9 and 10. Congratulations, guys. That is race 6 done. Four more races to go. Four more races to go. No one died on this one. I don't think we saw a single death. If I'm wrong, let me know, but I don't think we did see a single death there. I think everyone passed. We'll find out at the end. Everyone needs to get stuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gaming. Uh, technically, yeah. Technically. There was a couple of deaths, was there? All oh, right, okay. I didn't, I didn't remember seeing any. Oh, they're all deaths at the end. New world record, second track with a world record there as well from Z Conob. Um, okay, so yeah, that is uh, lots of people got through on this one. Let's see who got 69th. 69th was pre-owned Amoeba. There you go. Let's see. Oh, there was a few DNFs. Fred Silosaurus, Timoleon, Dimble Machine, Captain Reed, Trojan, and 8th. Yeah, oh yeah, I do remember Trojan and Captain 8th being out. There we go. So that is race 6 done. Um, so we'll be doing race 7 shortly. Um, we've got three more races to go. It's going to be exciting and interesting to see how that goes. See who we're going to be giving away the Cycle 8 to today. Probably fell off. Maybe. Maybe. Didn't say myself. Did a typo. Right? <laughs> you might have done. You might have done. You can fall off the balls. Yeah, people can fall off at the end. That at fourth place, right in the end. Ah, sorry, man. Right, okay, let's carry on with the build stream. So we've now got all of our switches and stabilizers installed. It is time to do some soldering. During the soldering phase, guys, I do like to do a bit of uh, an AMA. So if you guys have got any questions you would like to ask me about anything at all, please do ask away. Best question asked during this phase, we might give a t-shirt to if anyone asks a particularly good question. Um, so do ask questions that you think might stump me or you might be interested in my responses to. It doesn't have to be keyboard related. It can be about anything at all. Life, the universe, math, history, science, philosophy, philosophy, politics. Maybe not politics. Um, you ask away. Best question. Gets, maybe get a prize. Maybe get a t-shirt. Uh, just tag me with at jprototypist to ask your question. And we'll go from there. Gonna plug in my soldering iron and then we can get to work on soldering these switches. I'm gonna do one PCB at a time, so I'm just gonna move this one to one side. And whilst the soldering iron is warming up and you guys are getting your questions in, I'm just gonna double check for bent pins. So I'm just doing a visual inspection of the PCB here just to make sure all of the switches are fully pressed into the PCB and plate, and also to make sure that all of the pins are showing and we've got no bent pins. And we'll do this for both PCBs. Just doing this for this one first. Okay, every switch has two pins, that looks good. Just check the other one as well. So I'm just doing a visual inspection, literally just going from switch to switch, just making sure I can see two pins poking through for each one, because there's nothing worse than soldering a single pin and then realizing the second one's been bent and not showing through. So it's always worthwhile just doing a double check here just to fix anything like that. Looks like everything's good. Okay. What switches are we going with? So just BMT. Uh, these are alpaca switches. Um, I, I was going to do like a, a chat's choice, but unfortunately, um, I don't have many of the lubed options right now. So it was a little bit difficult to do that. So I had to pick 
when I picked alpacas. Last to finish, not always a bad thing. That's true. Not sure, not sure this came through last time, but off the back of talking about the accountant, how does your tipping system work? So if you leave a tip at checkout, what happens is pretty much every time staff are in the office, we go out for lunch. Um, I like to try and keep people happy and paying for lunch is one of the things that we do quite often. Most of the time I pay for it, but if there's enough tips, then the company pays for it. Um, and effectively the tips basically keep us in food when we're here at work. I also pay for things like coffee and milk and all of those kind of things that we need. Biscuits, sweets, snacks, all of that kind of stuff as well. Um, in terms of the actual volume of tips, we don't get that much. And uh, there's quite often a shortfall when it comes to actually paying for a lot of the food that we consume here at PT. So I end up usually covering the, the out, the out of my personal pocket. Um, I think on average a month we end up with something like, I don't know, like 50 quid's worth of tips over the course of a month, which we, we don't expect it, so that's not like a complaint, but it's not huge amounts of money. And I think I probably spend somewhere in the region of about 300 to 350 pounds a month on uh, food for staff each month. So, um, yeah, that's what it's used for. Uh, from an accounting perspective, that works quite simply as the tips are offset against uh, the petty cash so yeah if there was ever in a situation where there was money left over at the end of a month the tips would just be divvied up between all the staff um, and we'd use it for that but uh, we <laughs> sadly we've never been in a position where there's been there's been money left over at the end of the month we are hungry people here at PT so probably should choose more healthy things though. Doesn't all tips go to Workshop Doggo? Uh, no, if you tip on the stream, um, all the tips on the stream will go to Workshop Doggo, but no one ever tips on the stream. So there's never any money for Workshop Doggo. But tips on the stream go to Workshop Doggo. And if we get any bits, we'll Incredible. use that. We'll use the bits for the mods. Let's let's have that rule. So bits go to the mods um, and give them like free stuff off the store or something like that. Um, and tips on the, on, on the stream. They will all go to Workshop Doggo for treats. But tips on the actual store rather than the stream. That's used for, for staff fun, let's just say. Because uh, we've done some stuff in the past, like we've done um, uh, like escape rooms and stuff as well. So we use it for that kind of stuff too. Uh, what do you think will be the next big innovation in keyboards and how far away do you think that will be? I don't think there's much space in terms of keyboards for us to innovate. I think, I think Hall Effect is going to be the next big thing. Uh, so magnetic style reed switches, so with magnets and things inside them for Hall Effect. That's kind of like the big thing that's that's going on at the moment. Um, there's not much space in terms of the hobby to do many things differently. I think we'll probably see a few more different styles of switch become available in the near future. I, I have seen some prototypes of stuff. I can't really talk about that at the moment, but I think there's some cool stuff happening there, but nothing that's kind of light years away from where we are right now. I think the biggest change will come as we start to embrace more alternative technologies, such as um, AIs and things like that, as, as those start to become more and more prolific in kind of tech-based roles. Um, I, I suspect we'll see a, a decline in actual usage of keyboards of people in the real world like people will still use them but it'll be fewer and far between you know i think i think that's something that will happen over the next five to ten years probably um because we'll instead of instead of using you know keyboards as input devices we'll just speak to computers that's going to be the ultimate technology when we just start talking to computers um and i don't think that's that's a million miles away right now There'll still always be a need for input devices and, and that will continue, especially for things like gaming and stuff like that. That's where we'll see the, the, the big need for it or people who actually like to write and type. And I think we'll probably start to, I wanna do kind of like a specialized version of one of our older keyboards for writers. Um, so I have kind of like an idea of having a keyboard and no, no one steal this idea, please. But having a keyboard or the screen in that's completely disconnected to anything like the internet or anything like that. Um, and the idea would be that you'd be able to use it as a, a writing specific device. So no distractions, 
you could have it as a device that would store on the screen like you'd have it be able to store your plot points um you know think of it like a graphical calculator but for writers plot points and uh, kind of like research based notes and that kind of stuff and it would just be used as a typing inputting device so i think old school electronic typewriter but with a modern interface and a custom probably android based os that's something i kind of want to investigate um i feel like that could be a useful tool to sell to aspiring writers or you know writing screenplays instead of typing it out in a word document you can type it on a specific dedicated input device i think that could be quite a useful thing but we'll see <clears throat> Uh, next question coming from Geeky Ellie said, how's Jay's Roastery doing? Uh, yeah, the coffee company's doing well. Like, we're still selling coffee to you guys. Um, the, the, the future plans have kind of been on hold because I've just been busy. So kind of like what Jay's Roastery is now is two sections. It's kind of like we sell coffee to a lot of local coffee shops and we make it specifically for them. And then what we sell on the store right now is just the keyboard enthusiasts who are the only people we've told about it um, in kind of like an early access alpha type experiment. Um, and, and you guys can buy the coffee because you guys are the only ones that know about it. So it's kind of like an alpha access version of the website. There is a, another version of the website that's built but not yet published and live, which is going to be the final version of the website when we actually start to advertise the brand and start to move away from just selling to coffee shops and actually start selling it at a retail um, kind of level. And that will have things like the book club on there. There'll be more options for the coffee. That's where we're going to lo launch the decaf. There's going to be more customizable parts to it. We'll be changing the AI art for um, personalized art. Um, we're working on a new logo. I actually need to chase that up actually with Tim because uh, he's been helping us with the logo side, side, side of stuff. So yeah, it's going it's going well, but it's kind of like a it's going to be a long burn kind of project. Is Jay's Roastery, um, and it's just going to take some time for us to get through it. Uh, and get it to to where it is so effectively when i show you guys each week on stream you guys are basically at the ground level getting beta access to it or alpha access it's probably alpha rather than a beta um you know i'm just taking you guys on the journey with me so the plan for the coffee stuff is to be like a five to ten year growth before we start to operate that as like a full-time enterprise um well, three to five years, sorry, not five to ten years. Three to five years is growth before it becomes a full-time enterprise. But the plan for that is to, to start building it up as we start to move towards the, the end of summer. And I can start to dedicate some time to it. So, yeah. Unfortunately, that is a business model that will need advertisement. Uh, nice boss treating stuff with food, staff with food. Well, I try, yeah. Um, one that I found quite interesting before is how would you describe the color red to a person who's always been blind? Um, that's a really interesting question, anonymous biker, because like colors, like it's pretty well documented in science now that um, the, the way I perceive, the way we all perceive color, is slightly different in terms of how our brains process it. So, in terms of how we see the wavelength, everyone sees the same wavelengths, but how your brain actually interprets that and displays it to yourself as you as your vision is kind of like the brain's own interpretation of it so what i see as green if you could see through my eyes you might say wait a minute why is why is your grass my red um because our brains are just interpreting it in a different way so we all agree that pink is pink and red is red and blue is blue but what your what is your blue is completely different to what mine is in fact you, your brain might invent colors that mine can't even see because of different ways of uh, of looking at it so um, yeah, how would I describe the color red? It's the color of anger, it's the color of passion. I think those are kind of like uh, ways you can describe it and, and what it's used for. But I don't think you could ever particularly, truly, fundamentally describe a color and expect someone else to have the exact same interpretation of that if you could see through each other's eyes. Um, you know, it, it, we, we all perceive color differently, despite the fact that we all agree on it and we all agree that, you know, this is the same color as, as uh, together our own internal perceptions of it are gonna, are gonna be different and they might be completely different or they might be broadly similar um there was a scientific study i read a few years ago which showed that we we probably do interpret colors very differently from one person to the other so yeah Gemma says if you were a chair which celebrity would you let sit on you scarlett johansson 
Um, people we need to feed workshop doggo. <laughs> uh, White whale classic car. So I have a few classic cars. I'm very lucky to own a few. I think the, the, the one big one for me that I would absolutely love, but I can just not afford, would be a Ken Miri Skyline. Um, yeah, I, I would absolutely adore a Ken Miri Skyline. There's only two in the UK. Uh, one of them was offered to me, but it was just ridiculously expensive. Uh, it was like 100 grand, and it wasn't the original engine. It wasn't... Um, all original parts and I just couldn't kind of couldn't justify it I didn't have the money either to start off with um, so yeah so at some point I would like to go out to Japan find a Ken Miri Skyline um, import it back over to the UK and then restore it myself that's kind of like the dream um, I need some money to do that and I think we're gonna move house soon as well so uh, house hunting and keeping my wife happy is kind of like the short term long term maybe 10 years time that's when I'm probably going to start to look for a Ken Miri Skyline. But that would be my absolute dream car to own. Um, so yeah, maybe one day. We'll see. Would you rather be cursed to use 40% forever or ANSI forever? <sighs> ANSI, I, I don't like that as a question RL keeps, but I struggle with 40%. Um, I did used to use one for just writing on a, on train journeys when I used to have a day job. Um, I used an Equinox for a couple of years uh, from Pona. I own keyboards. Um... I really enjoyed that actually. I had a red one. It was one of the early prototypes. I don't even know if they did a group buy for it or not. I can't remember. But um, yeah, I had that for a couple of years. I sold it a while back now actually. Um, but yeah, I, I used that for writing, uh, just emails and stuff. But I couldn't do anything in depth, like Jira tickets and stuff like that became nonsensical when I started to need proper punctuation and stuff like that. So it was mainly just used for like notes, reminders. Um, that kind of thing and uh, simple emails like internal emails and stuff like that so yeah I think if I had to pick I'd probably just pick ANSI at one time I couldn't use ANSI very well and I've kind of learned over the years to be able to flip and flop between ANSI and ISO quite easily but yeah Nimble Machine says PT operates on a, a four day work week did you implement this early on in the business or later on was it your idea or did the staff ask you to look into it so for the first 18 months of PT existing, it was just me. So for the first 18 months, it was no one else. Then Mel joined and she joined on a part-time basis. Um, and then we had Leo and Josh and Sharon join um, about two years ago. Leo has moved on to Pastures New. Um, and Josh was kind of like informally part of the team and is now formally part of the team. Um, so it, it kind of happened by accident. Um, I... Uh, how like I've always believed that a four-day working week is good for people. The staff didn't really ask for it. Mel's part-time anyway. She only works Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, Leo was working a few more hours in his last few months before he left. It's nearly a year since Leo left, actually. And um, when Sharon joined as well, Sharon was going to be full-time. And we, we talked about it, and I just said, you know, my view is that people work better if you have a four-day week. You have a day off in the middle of the week. You have your full weekend it's easy for you to process stuff you get that relaxation you can pick up the stuff that you need to do in the middle of the week like go shopping or whatever it is and go to the doctors and all of those kind of things you can never do because they're shit on a weekend and it gives people opportunity to enjoy life more so my kind of view like if i was still working for the bank that i used to work for i would 100 percent have implemented this for my team by now um four day working week is is absolutely the future it's where all businesses should be looking towards people are more productive people are happier um, happy stuff is good stuff, right? Like, as I said before earlier on the stream, I'm always going to make decisions that my staff disagree with, but as long as they know that ultimately I have the best intentions for them, then it makes sometimes the difficult decisions a little bit easier to swallow if you've got good policies in place for staff. So, yeah. What's your next coffee purchase? Oh, man. I want an ACS um, Vostok for home. That's that's probably going to be my next per purchase an ACS Vostok machine for at home because I really love lever coffee machines and yeah I think a Vostok for home would be great uh, one day a stream with one of your staff members we've done a stream with Mel before uh, Mel did it she built her own JR1 on stream probably a couple of years ago now it should be somewhere on YouTube um, it's actually the second time Mel's been on stream she was on stream a few years back as well so it's been done um, Sharon probably wouldn't enjoy it. Um, Sharon is actually my mother-in-law as well. And um, I'm not sure that streaming would be for her. Um, but maybe, you never know. Maybe we'll do like a full 
workshop stream one day. Who knows? Who knows? I think it'd be, cool. it'd be fun to get Josh on here with me as well. But I know because Josh is in the States, he kind of works whilst I'm streaming a lot. So like his day job. Um, so that might be difficult, but maybe we could arrange it one day. Who knows? Who knows? I think we're going to have a stream from the States in a couple of weeks anyway when I'm over there. Um, so that could be quite fun and interesting. That'll be uh, Sunday the 3rd of August, I think it is. That's when I'm going to be at the Novel Keys meetup. Okay, that is all of our soldering done. Let's catch up with chat and see what else you guys have been talking about. And then we'll start to put the keyboard together. Uh, shout out to eBassler for pioneering the split hub thing. The goal is to open source the schematic for it as well. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with this PCB. It's a really beautiful thing. Um, it's very well designed, very well put together. Um, yeah, Lemo left. Okay, Lemo connectors, yeah. Um, and then we've got the uh, the dot board connectors. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll figure that out in a little bit. Wait, do I have a cable that connects the two together? Is that can include it. What do you think? Oh yeah, so it's the Lemo connectors for each side. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah. <clears throat> As a writer myself, you haven't made attention. Yeah. What question do you want to answer for me to get a free T-shirt? Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't think any of the questions so far have yet warranted a, a T-shirt. But if someone asks me something really good, we'll, we'll give one away. <laughs> I just tuned in, sorry for this asked already, but what TKL is on our desk? Love the color. So the TKL on my desk here, uh, this is a custom um, made for me um, TGR Koala. It's pink and green, and it's got the prototypist logo milled into it, the company logo, uh, but it is a TGR Koala. And that was made for me by the TGR team. So yeah, big fan of that. One of my favorite keyboards. The Remarkable 2 tablet with its keyboard comes very close. It's a shame they didn't open up the USB-C port to generic devices like keyboards. Yeah, I, I don't mean the Remarkable kind of thing. Like, I mean, like, so in my in my head, and someone's going to steal this idea, I know they have, because I've talked about it. Every time I talk about an idea on stream, someone goes out and then there's an IC six weeks later for it, I swear. Like, I talked about um, doing, like, a pink alert set, and then literally Alessio did it, and it was like, Arr! I'm sure it's just, like, things happening alongside each other, but sometimes it's frustrating. Um, but, yeah, so I'm, I'm almost envisioning, like, uh, a keyboard um like a small 65 percent style keyboard with kind of like a screen that's kind of embedded maybe that you can drop an ipad into it and maybe it's an ipad app i don't know i haven't thought it through yet in fact that's probably the best way to do it so you have an ipad app and maybe like if we took a jo2 but where the pen rail is you could actually slide the ipad in there and it was like an ipad holder and it was 65 percent instead of 60 percent and you could then have an app that was actually just just literally for writing so it's a really great writing text editor and it kind of locks you out from other things you could put it in single app mode and just focus on your writing i think that's that's kind of like where i want to get to a decaf interesting yeah i want a keyboard with a screen for writing with a little inbuilt thermal printer to print stuff off maybe question i know you're trying to open up a business a day to keep the corporate away have you considered anything around your love of jdm cars um i'm not trying to open up like a business a day like i have a few ideas of stuff that i want to do to strain and prevent me ever having to go back to a corporate job i don't need to make a ton of money i just need to make enough money for me and my family to live and you know like i earn like 12 grand a year from pt like i earn next to nothing and hopefully the coffee company will be something that will pay me a reasonable salary at some point in the near future um hopefully that'll go well i do want to do some other stuff like edc style stuff so i have a design for a knife that i've had produced i have one uh, some people did get lucky enough to see it at the meetup, but yeah, so I kind of want to tweak that and maybe produce that. That's probably something we do through Kickstarter and have it completely separate to like PT and the coffee company. Um, but kind of like an everyday carry type brand is something I'd absolutely love to do. Watch straps, um, uh, kind of like uh, knife housings, things like that. That's kind of something I want to look into. <sighs> A classic car restoration business. Dude, like... It's kind of the dream, but I don't have enough money to start something like that up. So yeah, <clears throat> zero hesitation, absolute zero. Wait, what? We need a Hoffman J coffee keeps crossover. If Hoffman, if Hoffman wouldn't want to do that with me, he absolutely wouldn't. I'm not important enough to do that. Blimey. Wait, what? What are you guys laughing at? What was the blind yet? Fastest answer. Oh, someone has previously thought about being the chair. 
if she needed somewhere to sit. That's all I'm saying, right? Kemiri and Hakusuka. Oh, dude, I'm not even going to open that because I want it. Just want to write the code and not write the acceptance criteria for the code. That's such a developer answer. Like, you have to remember, right? So, so this is the thing, okay? So I worked in project delivery, which generally required coding for a lot of it for a long time. Some of it was hardware implementation, some of it was software. And anyway, I've worked on a lot of different things. Um, the, the, the issue you always find is that the... The, the developers who write in the code, they don't want to do the, they want to do the doing, they want to get the code written, but they don't want to do the kind of like the whole feedback to the business and kind of like do the demos and all of that proof of concepts and all that kind of stuff. They don't want to kind of present it back, but the project managers, they kind of need that to show, to, to give viability to the stakeholders and the organization that you're working for that this is actually on track. This is a good thing. You need to give us the money for this. Let's continue funding this. And it's a really difficult thing to balance. And there is because the mindsets are so different, you can see why some people fall into one role and some people fall into the other role. Um, and I get the, the, the PMs and developers are kind of at odds quite a lot of the time, but you need them both to make it work, right? So yeah. There's a whole thing in psychology called qualia where you can never be sure the same constructs are referred to the same as how we experimentally perceive them. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it took me a while to learn ISO too. I kept missing the left shift. Yeah, I can hear that. I have discretionary time off. I take 35 days a year, but I go down to 20 for a reliable day a week. Yeah, it makes sense. Going to the four day working week as I get older, I want to give back to my community. I'm looking at joining the Loracle Repair Cafe and possibly becoming a school governor. So I can apply better business acumen to something totally different. Yeah, like if I had kids, I'd absolutely want to be on the, like, you know, school governor board or something like that. That's absolutely something I'd love to do. What do you think is your biggest achievement? So my biggest achievement to date in life is probably PT. You know, it's a multi-million pound business that we started from scratch and it was in my garage for six months and now five years later, here we are with a huge workshop and, you know, five members of staff. And part of that is probably the SPC. So people who subscribe, uh, see the sub goal here. Um, if you subscribe and link your Twitch and your Discord, there is like a community on there called the SPC, which is our Twitch subs. I'm not going to tell you what SPC stands for. You have to be a sub to find that out. Um, and that community is 99.99% of the time incredibly wholesome, incredibly welcoming. It's full of the nicest people in the keyboard hobby. And I, I am more proud of the SPC than I am of PT sometimes because that community is just such full of nice people. And yeah. I, I really enjoy it. So yeah. Midnight Rainbow R2, any progress? Uh, yes, Ed. So Midnight Rainbow R2, I've been speaking to Mike at Novel Keys uh, because they get better pricing from GMK than I do. Um, so I want them to be kind of like the lead vendor for it just because I've got so many other things going on and they were the lead vendor for round one. So we've been talking about it. I'm going to be sending over some revised kitting very soon and hopefully it won't be too far away. If you could design a POG keycap, what design would be on it? Uh, we could do like a little cool PT logo type thing or some keyboard type thing. Or we could put Ozzy the octopus on, which is the octopus off of our t-shirts. This would be quite cool. So this is Ozzy the octopus. Um, and that'd be quite cool to put on a, on a pog, right? So yeah, we'd probably do that. That's the t-shirt you can win, by the way. <clears throat> Have you ever used any silent switches that you've enjoyed? Looking at putting together a keyboard for work and considering the idea, but wouldn't like them to be too mushy. I'm not a fan of silent switches. I'm probably not the best person to ask, just BMT. If you go onto the prototypist.net and you look at, um, this is gonna be the wrong web page, uh, prototypist.net and you look at the in-stock products and you come down to switches, you'll see Jay's curated switches. These are the switches that I personally would use in my own build. Some of them are sold out, unfortunately, uh, but these are the switches that I would personally use that we have in stock. Um, so that's, that's probably the best I can, give you as an answer to that one. Not a fan of silent switches. <sighs> that was one off knife. Sorry, so Lex sending it. Don't worry about it, it's fine. Uh, you could call it Jay's rest story. Uh, yeah, restoration, maybe. I don't know, maybe, maybe. I'd probably call it something different, but yeah. Like I'd probably call it, so I actually, so here's a fun thing, super hands. I actually do have a website that is, um, not publicized at the minute. Uh, is it .net, I think? Let's see if this is it. Okay, so. Yeah, okay. So what I actually have um, 
is I have a website called JDM. So most of my personal collection of cars are Japanese domestic market, JDM. So I have a website that's JDM.net, which is kind of hidden. I never actually published it yet. Um, so I would probably do it as JDM. Um, and here you can see, for example, this is my uh, 1976 Laurel. Um, I, and I've never, I've never finished around building this. This is my 1971. This is the PT workshop in the background, by the way. This is my 1971 uh, Datsun 521. Um, so yeah, so this is a page I actually did do, um, and I, I kind of like never got around to building the rest of it. Um, oh, the Subaru Legacy. Uh, yeah, so you can see that this kind of was an idea that I had. This is probably what I would call the car company, JDM, and I would specialize in Japanese cars. Like I only got two of my cars on here. The the, re the rest of some of the other ones I own. So I have a Datsun 280ZS30. Uh, I have two 20, uh, P130s. I have a 2400 Datsun and a, a Nissan Cedric as well. They're both the same car, but different years and uh, different brands. And I have a 620 and I did have a Subaru Legacy as well. That's now belongs to Tim. So you can see how long it is since I actually did this. Um, like I've, I've never got around to actually building the rest of the store the rest of the site but you know it, it, it's something i was working on and toying with um yeah i think i think the Datsun 521 was the only thing that i fully wrote oh look there's mel's car in the background that red car's mel's car um so yeah so i i that's that's probably something that I, that's probably where i would go with it um so yeah yeah i hope that answers that one super hands we lost our PM recently, so as SWEs, we just had to do a lot of jeering lately. Yeah, okay, if you need a decent PM, let me know. <laughs> like, <laughs> let me know. Um, I do jeering now as an architect. So my plan, Geekyhead, was to move into architecture within the bank that I used to work for. If I'd have got there, it kind of never happened. Um, I ended up leaving, but yeah. Special cool people, sparkling person club. Yeah. Will Midnight Rainbow R2 have the newest standardized international kit? Uh, still to be confirmed, uh, V Rug Dush, we will see. I don't want to confirm anything right now until I've spoken to Mike and we've actually got it done. Uh, still only seems to do ISO Enter Octopus stuff, they are fun. Dude, yeah, do some designs, let me know. Uh, I want Aussie as an engraved weight on your next board. Maybe we could do that. I'd need to speak to Crash because he designed it. I do have a thing for octopuses, so maybe. Uh, not like the deep level of octopus stuff, but you know. What book would pair West best with the sci-fi blend? Right now, uh, I am reading... Uh, oh, gosh, what am I reading? It's um, Dan Simmons' books, uh, Hyperion. So I would recommend that, uh, Aiko Megami. Uh, Dan Simmons' Hyperion group of novels, they are really, really good. I'm reading about 20 minutes every night, and it's taken me forever to get through it, but I thoroughly enjoy them. And it's about 20 years since I last read them, so yeah. <clears throat> Jay designs a bunch of switches, all named after ScarJo movie characters. No, like, it was just an off the cuff comment with the whole ScarJo thing. Like, I, she's very attractive. Um, there are a lot of people who I would let sit on me if I was a chair. Like, yeah. Like, I, I, if I actually, let's turn this around. Let's, it was a good question. Do you know what, Jimmy? You get a t shirt for this because it's a good question. Right, let me turn this around to chat. Chat, I want you guys to post in chat who you would let sit on you if you were a chair which celebrity would you let sit on you if you were a chair i need you to all post in chat what the answer to that is yeah <clears throat> got one board with the wukuns and one with the utamus prefer the wuk studio silence that's fair that's fair alvi oh that would make me happy i'm not famous super hand, so that doesn't count Gemma, drop me a message with your address and I'll, I'll send you out a t-shirt. <laughs> Kate Beckinsale? Two of you saying Kate Beckinsale. Okay. Interesting. Anna Taylor-Joy. Yeah, Florence Pugh. I can't disagree with any of these. Yeah, okay. Judy Dench? Yeah, dude. I respect that, man. I respect it. I'd be interested to see what Gemma's answer is. I'm Twitch famous? Dude, like, I have, like, I average, like, a thousand views on each stream over a course of a week um so yeah david beckham fair i get that i get that so i'm not twitch famous i'm like twitch minority swing the other way tom holland good shout good shout keep famous no henry cavill yeah i kind of agree with that one yeah henry cavill is one of the few men that if he came up to me Chris Hemsworth as well, right? Yeah, I get it. I get it. 
Burium wins? What did Burium say? Oh, Henry Cavill. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hatsune Miku? I don't know who that is. I'm going to have to Google that. Oh, uh, yeah. No wonder. It's... It, it, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't know who that was. A VTuber, I guess. How on earth do you not know? Dude, I have no idea about, like, kind of like Japanese culture in that kind of sense, like anime and all the VTubers and stuff. I have no idea about it at all. Yeah. Google says, save, save, search on. Yeah, I didn't, unfortunately, but there was nothing that came up that was uh, unbeknownst to me. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Some interesting answers there. Right. Okay. Let's crack on with build because it's, it's getting late. and <laughs> It's 11 p.m. The light, in fact, is going to go out behind me at 11 p.m. because that's when I'm supposed to go home. That's that's kind of like the cue for me to go home on a stream night. And we haven't even finished putting the keyboard together here. Okay. So, Rebecca Ferguson. Great shout. David Attenborough. And use me to rest and narrate the wildlife in my garden. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. Everyone was going with the not safe for work answers, and uh, Sacred Shapes went with the, the kind of like the, the, the cool answer. Carl Sagan, yeah. Ayrton and Senna, I'd love to hear Ayrton and Senna speak about, you know, racing and stuff. <sighs> marbles, oh yeah, we've got we've still got loads to do for marbles. Let's let before we before we even put this in the case, let's do another marbles run because we have to give away the cycle, the cycle seven today. So yeah, let's do the next race. Okay, exclamation mark play guys puts you in for it. Um this is going to be race seven. We've got three more to go. Alison Bree, yes. You guys have got. You guys are making some good choices today. Okay, so we've got three races left to do. This is going to be race seven. Um, as soon as there's 90 people in there, I'm going to hit go. So there's 89 right now. Um, you got 10 seconds. This is going to be interesting to see how this ends. Oh, this is a quite a straight shot. This could be quite a quick one, actually. Let's let's hope this is a relatively quick one. Um, and we'll see who's going to win the Cycle 7. But I'm hoping we've finished the Theseus build today. It's going to be a late one, I think. But that's fine. That's fine. Okay, here we go. Let's see who's going to make it through the Plinko Plonko board first. We're going to all drop down the side. Josh Shoshio's in the lead. But then we're going to come bouncing back up. Uh, La La Blah is probably in the lead just about now. Jellymass is in the lead on the right-hand side. Yattering is just behind La La Blah. Still a long way to go though so it's all not down to this yattering is probably going to get out of here first maybe no avaloins and free juice and Gemma all make it through first uh jelly mess is there as well conan is down and dead anarchy's in the top 10 again at the minute a few people at the back including myself and true blaze and jms well, unfortunately that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes free juice has got a massive lead though all of a sudden they're miles ahead as they go up this conveyor belt uh Nufi, Poship, just bmt stereo joe ball boy Gemma, captain reed all coming through though free juice has slowed right down um Mr. Gimp is dead. Free Juice is in the lead, though. Still tearing it up. Lots to go, though. Still plenty of time for them to slow down and miss things and get stuck. So anyone else could catch up. Ball Boy is in second there. Bar Bartowski, Just BMC, Avaloins, Do Dog, Lazy Keiko, Oskalin are all coming through nicely. The light's going out because it's 11 o'clock. I'll turn it back on in a second. The Unborn's there as well. I'm right at the very back, man. I'm having a terrible series of races here. Looks like Ball Boy is catching up Free Juice as well. Ball Boy has now taken the lead. Nufi's coming through. So is Lazy Keiko. People are slowing down on the end. Jelly Master's there. Nufi's off the map. Free Juice and Ball Boy are going to hit the last set of obstacles together before the final run down to the end but it looks like jelly master's catching up and might go around the outside here and take the lead ball boy's just about fired his way through and just captain reads there as well super hands is coming through super hands fires off towards the end but there's still obstacles in the way no now it's magic turtle refried breens dies b rug rush captain reed is now in the lead b rug rush is coming through captain turtle there as well shadow realm is coming through just steph has got some speed up but v rug is Oh, slow down. Just Steph might take the win here. Let's see what's happening here. Plenty of obstacles still to go. So it's all still to play for. Captain Reed has got a bit of speed up. Catching up on Just Steph. Storsus is coming through as well. Just Steph has only just made it through. Are they going to take the win? v just takes second away from Captain Reed right at the last second. Storsus is going to take fourth. Anamushki is going to take fifth. Ojem is going to take sixth. Keep Science takes seventh. Lazy Cake on Ball Boy take eight to the ninth. And Yattering takes tenth. Congratulations, guys. That was a great race. That was a great race. 
the lead swapped like 10 times in the last five seconds there. It was crazy. Kojak is up in the air, undecided. Is he going to land back on the track? No. Kojak is dead. So there we go. That is race seven done. Eight, nine, and ten left to go. <laughs> Eight, nine, and ten left to go. That t-shirt is mine. Hey, if you get if you get ten out of ten DNFs, we will we'll give someone a t-shirt for that. I'm just gonna turn the light back on because it's turned off. There we go. Okay, so we're just gonna wait for the end of this one. We've got three races more to do. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna get the, the, the keyboard assembled into the case and start to make sure we've got the cables and everything right. Um, so I'm probably gonna have to load up the, uh, the build guide to check that through and uh, make sure I'm doing things in the right order. So there we go. That is, uh, let's see who got 69th, because that's always fun. No one got 69th because there was too many DNFs. Wow, look at all those DNFs. So there we go. Okay, right. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the stuff into the case and I think we're just gonna load up the build guide so we can check what we're doing from that perspective. Just to make sure we're gonna do it correctly. So let's have a look through. Uh, we've assembled the plate and PCBs. That's all now nice and neatly done. Mount the plate and PCB assembly. So I think uh, if a mod's watching, can we have a poll to see whether we want to do the 50 A, oh, I'm not even showing this, there we go. Do we want to do the 50 A durometer grommets or do we want to do the 70 A? The 50 A are slightly lighter, the 70 A are slightly firmer in typing feel. So if we can get a moderator to put up a poll for that, you guys can pick which ones you'd like to see whilst I dig them out from a pile of stuff over here. Here they are. going to mount the plate and PCB assembly into the case. Oh, do we screw these through as well? No. Do we? Maybe we do. Align the grommets to reach this inside. Use the optional 8mm set of screw into the wide end of the grommet and tighten the Okay, yeah, we will use the screws. Let's use the screws. Wallace needs you. Okay. 58 or 78. Get your votes in, guys. Let me know what you'd like to do. Can. It's technically the top now. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the top here while you guys are voting for this. And then we can figure out. Which side's going to go in which. Oops. Grab that bag of screws back as well, because we're going to need those, I think. Okay, it looks like it's pretty even split at the moment. So guys, which do you want to see me use here? Do you want to see the uh, the firmer build or the, the softer build? Do you want it to be a soft typing experience or do you want it to be a firmer typing experience? Let me know. Let me know. You just need to get your vote in. You can either vote for 50A, which is blue, or you can vote for 70A, which is purple. The vote is up at the moment on the screen. We've got a few minutes left to join there. I don't know which is going to win, so I don't want to get them all out and then not know. Have you seen the RB17 hypercar that Adrian New designed? I have, yeah. It looks great. It looks fantastic. Uh, I also saw him in a Ferrari at Goodwood, so you know what that means. Grommet time, yeah. Okay, it looks like the 50As are gonna win. So, do I do I dare get the 50As ready? I think I'm gonna get the 50As ready. I can't see the 70s catching up now. So we're gonna get the, uh, the 50As ready. And we're gonna install them into the plate and PCB like this. You watch, this is where it's all gonna change and you guys are gonna change the, the voting pattern. See how they install? They just grab it into the plate like that. <laughs> Digging the documentation on show, great build guide. Yeah, the build guide's great. It's uh, it's really in depth. It's always nice to see that kind of thing. I do like these, uh, these grommets as well. They're pretty nice. 
Yeah, don't forget you can get 10% discount on anything in stock as well. There is a code pinned to the top of chat if you would like to use that. Okay, they install pretty easily. I can't see the 50As losing. <laughs> Knowing my luck, they will. I'll get them all installed, and then you guys will. Uh, I'll, I'll, someone will pay to vote to rig the vote, I suspect. That's what's going to happen. Are you planning to visit the Festival of Speed next year? I was going to go this year and timing just didn't align for a number of different reasons. Um, but effectively, I, I, I do have a standing invite to take the Laurel. So at some point I will be going. I just don't know when that's going to be yet. So we'll see. Super detail. Yeah, the, the build guide's fantastic. Longest poll ever. Yeah, I don't know how, how long this was set for. Um, like I can't see the the seventy eight winning now, so I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ignore the poll and uh, and build that with the with the seventy eight the fifty eights. If the poll changes now, it's too late. The polls run long enough. <laughs> okay, oh, let me start. Love to see if those ever do plan. Let me know as I'm around the corner for good work. Nice. Tommy just wants to keep you up late, Jane. Hey, man. Story of my life. Story of my life. Okay, 50 days have definitely won. Okay, so we're going to put the uh, uh, into the housings here. It's really hard to show you in the light, but you can see here there's kind of like a, a, an indentation. That's where the grommets sit, and then you can screw it in. And there's four of those. There is there is two. It's so hard to show you in the light. There you go. Two here as well. So we're going to use those to line that up. And what we're going to do, we're going to take this half, and we're just going to drop it in there. And we're just going to make sure that all lines up nicely. That's looking good there. Then we're just going to check what screwdriver we need. We need a Phillips one. We're going to put a screw in each one of these just to hold everything together. Um, it's going to make it a little bit easier to build this keyboard if we do this. And then we're just going to screw those down gently. Now we're not trying to crush the, the parts together here. We're just trying to hold everything together. We don't want the gaskets to not perform their function. So we're not going to tighten them all the way. We're just going to use them as a holder, effectively. So just until we meet a tiny bit of resistance, that's all we're going to do. And there we go. That's one half now fully constructed. We've still got more things to do. So we still have to put the daughter boards in place, which we'll do in a second. Uh, and we still have to do a multitude of other things, but we've, uh, we're have we gonna follow the build guide for that. Put the screws in here as well. So you can see I'm just screwing these in just until it starts to grip the gasket, mounts the little, little grommets, and then that's as far as we're tightening those up. Remember this, you don't have to use the screws, so we're just using them to hold things together. So if I turn these upside down, it's not all gonna fall out much more secure. Soft screws are a pain. The kind that just strips off with the quality, yeah. Big Phillips screws for these, we need two bits max to assemble the board. There's nothing wrong with the Phillips screw. I like Torx, but you know, there's nothing wrong with the Phillips screw. I'm not a huge fan of hex, um, unless it's like for industrial stuff, just because it rounds too easily, especially if you get cheap screws. Like cheap screws can round really easily and I don't like that at all. Come on, why can I not get this screw? Come on, what are you doing? Are you misaligned it? No, there we go. There we go. Okay, cool. So yeah, so the reason why I struggle with uh, with um, 
ribbons on stream is because the stream lights are so bright. Like what you're seeing here in this area is kind of like a really dimmed down version. You can see how bright the lights are on, on the keyboard there. So I actually really can't see. I get a really bad reflection, especially with my glasses. Um, so I find it really difficult to see what I'm doing sometimes, but it's just one of those things. Okay, so that's that done. Let's uh, get the build guide back up and see what's next. So we've installed those, we've screwed them in. Connect and mount the daughter boards. So we're going to connect the daughter boards and we're going to mount them with the ribbon cables. Nice and simple. We should have some screws for that. Are they in this packet? Yeah, here we go. So we need one, two, three, and four. Get these installed. So that one goes there, and that one goes there. Interesting that it's not the same part across two sides. Wait, is this the same part that's just reversed? No. So two completely different parts. I'm just going to install these. What's your thought on racing sim? Uh, yeah, I um, I, I enjoy using a racing sim, but I don't own one. Um, I have a friend who who is hugely into it, or used to be. Um, I, it's something that I would love to have the time for, but I'm not particularly good race driver. I can drive really well on like like fast road circuits and stuff, but um, yeah. I so he my my friend is uh, is very very talented, um, and um, he's called Steve, and he actually built a catering about nearly 10 years ago now i helped him build a caterham uh, in his garage and then he entered that caterham into the caterham amateur academy and he went and won the championship in his first year so yeah um he's very very talented as a driver and i i can't get any we go karting every now and again i just can never get anywhere close to him even though i'm, I'm like always second on the timesheets he's just you know seconds ahead of me okay so that's the first one done there and what we're going to do is we're just going to flip up the connectors on all four parts and then we're going to dig out the ribbon cables which are here so i'm just going to zoom in because this is where it's getting quite technical now so you guys can see we've got the ribbon cable that goes here to here and here to here because we put the two daughter boards in look at that guide the guide's so good Come on, right, there we go. So, ribbon cable is going to go in there, and we're going to trap that down, and then we're going to push that. Okay, so that needs to go down like so, and then we're going to push it a little bit further. ribbon cable one installed Very fiddly, but done. Nice and easy. <clears throat> okay, so ribbon cables are installed. Let's get up the build guide and see what is next. Okay, so connect and mount and connect the panel mount connectors. Insert the Molex end of the panel mount connector cable into the slot on the back of the frame with the red indicator on the other side facing the top side of the board. Okay. Okay, I think. I think that means we're on to the, uh, the, the, the Molex. Not the Molex, the, uh, the Flemos. So, this is a Flemo connector. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to undo kind of like the bolt on the back here. Okay. 
Oh, these are pre-bent, so you know where they go. Well, I know they go in the case, right? Uh, hold on. Hold on a second. Which side is... This is this side. This one... Oh, so I've got the one for this side case. Okay, right. So, effectively what we have here is we have a little red dot on the top. And that's going to go to the top of the case. So that's going to sit like so in that hole there. And then because the wire curves around to the right on this one, it's going to go into this groove because this is going to be upside down. So it's going to go in like so and sit in that groove there. So nice. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this through the board like so. We're going to straighten it up. We've got that connected nice and neatly there. Red marker to the top. Then we're going to come around onto the inside and we're going to take the ring first. I'm going to put that around. I'm going to put that up against the case. And then we're going to take the uh, bolts. We've got the washer in. I'm going to take the, the nut, sorry, not the bolt. And then we're going to put that up against here. We're just going to gently tighten that up. Sorry, I'm trying to keep that on camera. I'm going to gently hand tighten this up. That should be plenty tight enough. I can't see that going anywhere. You could always put a spanner on that if you wanted to, but there we go. That's now installed. We can see that connects this side. And then that is going to just clip onto this clip here on the PCB. So let's see if I can get that in place. Does this just push down or does it slide in? Can't tell if this just clicks in or if it slides. I think it just pushes down. Yeah, cool. So it just pushes down. Yeah, there we go. Nice, clean, and tidy. Okay, let's do the other side now. Two more packets here. Not sure what's going on. This is Molex HC connector, the big brother to the regular Molex you see in new boards. Nice. I, I did wonder if you were going to go for Molex here as well, actually. When I saw the original IC, I did wonder if it was going to have Molex on there or not. But people have asked me why I keep calling this the daddy of, uh, of, of 70, split 75s, and this is the reason why, right? These are really, really cool to have in the, uh, the limos. So. Feed that through again. We know it's going to go that way around. And then we're going to feed this along there. And then we're going to get that all fastened away. Any updates on the rubber haku? Uh, so they're going to happen, I think, late this month. I've got this a little bit cross threaded. Let's see if we can fix that. Yeah, so I don't have any specific dates for you yet, McMahora, but I think it's going to be the back end this month, back end of July. As soon as we've got dates, we'll share them. Okay, that's all that done in place. And we're just going to push this down again. There we go. Oops, no, we've not got quite in. Hmm. There we go. That's now all in place. And we have the two connectors all done. Okay, back to the build guide. Let's see what's next. Uh, Click the Molex housings. We've done that. Assemble the case. After checking all connectors and ensuring the assembly is snow, place the polycarbonate base over the assembly. Start with the front lip and tilting back. Fasten the base frame with the socket screws. And then feet have been done. We can now put the right side up. Okay, so let's finish off doing this. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see now how we put the case on there we go there we go so we're going to get sure we've got the right case we're just going to pop this in place help if i don't drop it just like so and you can see that cable now runs nice and neatly under there and we have two screws 
in the case originally, so I'll put those two back. Just like so. I'm not going to over tighten these because they're going through polycarbonate. I don't want to crack the polycarbonate. It just needs to be tight enough to hold it all in place. Do the other side and then I'll dig out some spare screws to finish it off with. There we go. <clears throat> and as soon as we've got all four screws in both halves, we'll do the next race for the Cycle 8 giveaway. Okay, where did I put those screws? Here they are. So we need four more screws out of here. One, two, three, four. Put this way now. Okay, one in there, one in there, one in there, and one in there as well. Jay, you probably don't know from the head, but is there any DCS Alp sets which support 6U? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. You could try looking at DCS White on Black Alps or DCS Reaper Alps. They're the only two sets we've got in stock right now. You could probably try have a look at those first. Can't see why anyone would have an issue with the Phillips screw. No, neither can I, to be honest. Okay. There we go, that's the cases now fully assembled. So we can switch these over. And then the next job is to mount the knobs. So, we need the knob mounting kit in a second. Let's just pop these together. Get a nice magnetic clunk. Oh, that's nice. So there we go. So that's the board ready for the, for the knobs. So we're gonna get the knob installation kit. Let's see how we do this on the build guide. So, uh, slide the O-ring uh, into the groove along each side of mount knob. Insert the M2 set screw into the side of each knob. Okay. So, I'm gonna put some little bit back in the bag here because I don't need everything. So, what we have here is we have the set piece. Camera please, focus. We have the set piece. You see that's where the M2 screw goes in that hole on the side. And we need to stretch the O-ring around the middle first. So that is the O-ring installed when the camera focuses. Go camera please, there you go. That's the O-ring installed. And then we're gonna install the M2 screw, which is a very, very tiny and almost impossibly small. So that is the screw in place, it's very, very tiny. We're not gonna tighten it up, we're just gonna install it and make sure the thread's on. And I'll try and show you what that looks like. So there you go, you can see the screw is just about in there. Only barely. We're gonna do that for the same for the other one. I'm gonna stretch the O-ring around. Again, we're just going to try and fit the little grub screw in place. This might be easy with tweezers, to be honest, but I think I've got it. He says, I'm not actually sure he's got it. There we go. There we go. That's the second one installed. Okay, let's get build, build get up and see what we do next. So we've done that, slide the mounts onto the encoder shafts and tighten the set screws inside the mounts. Place the knobs over the mounts and rotate until the knob seat itself onto the mount. Gently press downwards to secure the knob over the O-ring. Okay, cool. That sounds pretty simple. So what we're gonna do is gonna put one on each side and we're gonna align up the D shape with the internal side and we're gonna push that down. How deep should that sit? It doesn't actually show how deep it should sit, but I think that's it. So we're going to put the other one on the other side as well. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to tighten those little grip screws. These are absolutely tiny, tiny, tiny.
Okay, that's nice and secure. I'm gonna do the other side now. There we go. And then I'll put that back because that's a very special size tool. I don't think I've got one that fine myself. So now we're gonna take out our bronze grip screw magnetic screwdriver. Yeah, maybe, that would probably be better. Take our bronze knobs and these should just now grip onto this. If I push them down, they should just pop in, I think. There we go. And now that's nice and secure. Would come off quite easily if we gave it a good tug, but it's secure enough to hold in place. And again, we're just going to pop that on. We'll just rotate it round. And there we go. That's those both now installed and looking good. Yeah, these are alpaca switches. There we go. See that knobs are installed fully. It's at the same height. Okay, excellent. Right, time to do the next race. Now we've got this built together. And then after we've done that, we'll put some keycaps on it. And we'll see how it looks. <laughs> don't tuck your knobs off. Absolutely don't tuck your knobs off. Right, okay, let's uh, let's jump back over to the game. All you need to do is exclamation mark play to put yourself into race eight. You can see I'm in there. Remember, we are giving away a cycle eight keyboard today. This is quite a quick track if I remember rightly. Oh, actually, maybe it's not. What's all that for? I don't know. Maybe it's not as quick as I thought it was. It says 58 seconds is the, the track record here, but we'll see. Okay, 75 people in. Come on, guys, hurry up. If you want to be in it to win it, if you've already done plenty of races, you need to stay in this to try and uh, win the Cycle 8 keyboard. There's not many of these about in the world at the moment, and they are in group buy right now. So is the Thesis 75. Go buy a Thesis 75. <laughs> okay, we're going to hit start because we've got 85 people in. And let's see how this race goes. Quick, guys, if you want to get in it, you've got to be in. Three, two, one. And away we go. Let's see who's going to make it down first into the pool. It's going to be Ebastler is in first. Lots of people making it down around. Nufi's there going on a slightly different line. Rack17 has got a very different line. Is he going to be the first one to drop through? Captain Reed isn't too far behind. Let's quickly squeeze down to the bottom and, and see who's going to come out first. I think it's going to be Rack17. Cynic12 has a very different line as well. Are they going to come and storm through? I'm not sure. Chartered Music's there as well, though. Rack17 does have quite a big lead as he comes through. Chartered17 is not too far behind. Dude on Beeperphone are taking out the next third and fourth spots. Uh, lots of people up towards the back. Anarchy there towards the back. Uh, Cynic12 is right at the very back. So is Matt Black as well. Let's see how they crack on as we come through. A couple of uh, obstacles later and Chartered Music has taken the lead. K8 Ince is not too far behind. Big jump. Are they staying on the track? They are staying on the track. They're managing to land back on the track. No one has died just yet. Duodot is coming through. Nufi drops down onto the bottom. Keep Science did die. Chartered Music is going to take a quick win though here by the looks of it. Boom. Chartered Music takes a quick win. Lazy Cake goes down. Duodon's going to take second. No, overshoots the finish line. Loads of people overshooting the finish line here. Um, maybe no one else is going to finish this. E Bastler, Hungry Mouth, Hungry Hannah, E Bastler, Hang, Rotate Quick, Sacred Shape, Shadow Realm, Po Ship, Exist, and Trojan. All round out the top 10. Lots of people died there right at the very end. Perlin's coming through the far side. Is she going to make it? She does make it. Alvi makes it as well. Alex OP makes it too. Have a Snails there as well. Lots of people dying left, right, and center. I don't even know what happened there. Like, so many people made it and so many people didn't. It was a, a, a difficult track there. Mr. Gimp. Come on, Mr. Gimp. Anarchy's dead. Lane 25 is over. Just makes it. Mr. Gimp dies. Charter Music does win with a one minute time. Final results were Charter Music, Hungry Kahana, E Bastler, Hang, Rotate Quake, Sacred Shapes, Shadow Realm, uh, Po Ship, Exists, and Trojam. Let's see. Only 30 finishers. Everyone else died. Wow. Only 30 finishes. That's kind of crazy. Okay. Well, that was race eight. We've got two races to go. We'll do those uh, shortly. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> Someone's going to really have earned the cycle eight today. Whoever wins it is going to really have earned it. Three deaths in a row for Mr. Game. Well, if he gets 10 out of 10 deaths, he will get a free t-shirt. So, yeah. 
Um, okay, so I guess the next job is to do keycaps. You guys need to pick some keycaps for the build. And I have a few choices for you. So hopefully a mod is still watching. Uh, if a mod's there, please let me know. And you guys can have the next poll to pick the keycaps we're going to put on the build today. Let's move that keyboard out of the way. Let's not spoil the show because if Theseus looks so good as it is. Look at that. Split 75. The daddy. We have a mod. Okay. Choices for keycaps today are GMK Botanical. GMK Ursa, which might be an outside chat, but might work quite well. GMK Olive. GMK Camping R3, R2, R2, yeah. This, this is the one with the sub-legends on. I don't know if you can see, but it has got the sub-legends on there. There you go. You can see down here. Sub-legends. Or alternative, if you guys want to go beige, we have GMK Classic Retro Arabic. So there you go. That is the five key sets you guys can pick from today. There's going to be a poll up in just a second. Botanicals. Well, you guys can vote in the poll in just a minute. As soon as Mr. Jellymaster has that up, you'll be able to vote. Don't forget, guys, you can get 10% off on anything in stock using the code INGERLANDSTREAM10. Uh, that will get you anything off our in-stock range until the end of the stream. So do take a look. Okay, the poll is up. Keys for the captain. Um, I've put my vote in for Classic Retro Arabic, but you guys vote, whatever you'd like to see. Let's mix it up with camping. Not a bad choice. Okay. While you guys vote, I'm going to have to take another comfort break because I've drunk so much of that juice and I'm going to refill it up as well because I want another one. So you guys keep voting. I'll leave the keyboard on screen so you guys can take a look at that and pick your keycaps. I'll be back in one minute, guys. Okay, guys, thank you very much for bearing mind with me there. Beige is good. Beige is always good. You can't beat a bit of beige. Looks like Botanical's winning, though. <sighs> I'll pay 10, extra 10% 10 with a Spaniard 10. No, no one would do that. Preference has its limits. Arabic, guys. Arabic's such a good set. I'm going to rig this. Go on, Storzus. You rig it if you can. If you can rig it, you go for it. Don't build botanical, it's being done. Hey, you guys have to vote for this. You guys have channel points. If you don't want to see it used, vote for something else. Get your votes in. <laughs> Damn it, I ran out of points. Well, I wonder if I could, can I give points to people? If anyone buys one of these, could I give them some points? I don't know if that works. No, I can't give channel points, unfortunately. I thought I might have been able to. Like I was wondering if like people bought them and I checked, would I be able to give channel points? I can't. 
<laughs> we rigging Arabic. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, it looks like someone is trying to rig Arabic. It looks like someone is trying to rig Retro Arabic. I don't have uh, Grizzly on in the sets today for choices. I do have Grizzly on uh, both G JTK and GMK, but they are in my personal collection still. I only picked out five sets today. So, yeah. Arabic rigged. If Arabic wins, I get Cycle 8 all maxed out, come fix with PCB. Uh, yeah, if you buy it, yeah, you have to buy it though. <laughs> the only Cycle 8 that's getting given away for free today is the one we have as a prize. Um, so, yeah. Which one you like most of the two, Jay? Energy Vortex for From GMK or JTK? GMK. Like, JTK is fine, but the reason it's cheaper is because the molds aren't quite as good um, and the legends aren't quite as crisp, and GMK's just quality just always looks good. You did it? Yeah, well, so far, unless someone else tries to beat you, uh, Storesness. Yeah. It looks like Retro Arabic is going to be what we're doing today, though. So let's uh, let's see how that comes out. I did have a cleaning cloth somewhere. That's there. Let me grab that, because I've got fingerprints all over this case so i give it a quick we give it a quick polish we do the quick wipies da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. <laughs> arabic rig gang i did the thing <laughs> okay i think arabic's gonna win i can't see anyone chasing chasing that now so let's uh Let's get some keycaps on the board. And then once we've done the keycaps, we will uh, do the next race. Oh man. So I'm not gonna use the red because it just won't work for this. Uh, oh man, like, hold on a second, hold on a second. Right, okay. <laughs> just making sure I've got a layout so I can see exactly what I'm doing. Uh, H. I'm just gonna go there. Hold on. Well, if I put it together, I can just work it out from that, right? There we go. Put the ISO enter key. I'm just gonna pop that onto the board just there. Tab. We have gone step count. We don't need that so far. Now we are gonna need FN. So I'm gonna put FN just there for now, but we might need to move that later on. Let's see. Uh, we're going to need that shift in a little while, that shift as well. F4 goes there, Z goes there, okay, don't need numpad. Shift goes there, oh, this set doesn't have space bar so we are going to have to, um, we are going to have to use shift keys for that but that's fine. Oh man, I hadn't even thought what we're going to use down the sides here. Maybe we will need numpad keys. Let's just try it before I put any keys back in the tub. Let's try and figure out the rest of the build first. When do we get our new sub badges? Uh, I am working on some sub stuff, but I don't know yet. You got the red legend sub legend Arabic? I thought it was a green one. No, it's the red one. It's the red one. Um, it does have UK ISO though, which is good. There's also the blue one, but that's the really rare dice of one, which next to nobody has. Uh, let's go with print screen for that for now. We'll probably want a page down, so let's leave that to one side. Arrow keys are going to go on nice and easily. Let's keep the shift keys to one side because we're going to need them. I feel like I feel like we should go with like the one new keys all down here just to just to balance it out nicely. If there's anything anti specific, I'm gonna get rid of that though. I'll figure out what we need from there. Shift keys shortly. I'm just going to put random one new profile keys there. Q. 
keep page up and page downs for this side. This already looks good. Beige on green is something that just, uh, it always goes hard, so. Got this got the really cool windows key we'll put a delete over there as well we'll figure that out in a second get the arrow keys in place spaceships yeah so on the, on the on the subs badge and stuff like that I do have some ideas um, and I want to try and just change the stream layout and stuff like that as well but it's just a time thing um, I'm trying to teach myself how to better use um, uh, like Adobe stuff I can use it in a broad sense but like I want to change all of the layouts and stuff that you see around the stream when it comes to Arabic these days yeah at one time at one time Arabic was was really hard to to get hold of um, in terms of a layout for, for keyboard oh wait we probably want that actually I'm gonna keep that because that's a 1.25 here I'm gonna put the other alt there we should be that uh, these days Arabic keys are quite easy to get hold of this particular set is not that easy to get hold of this is retro Arabic um, quite a rare set. I think we only made 150 of this, so we don't need that control. Oh, we do have the one new Windows key, actually. I am going to change this up, and I'm going to take that out, put the one new Windows key in there, because I love it. I'm going to put that there. And then we can put page up and page down. There we go. Look like a keyboard now. Visually easy to tell what's going on, and I think it's that one. Yeah. So there we go. That is the split. Just looks like Arial, the Arabic font. Yeah, I, I get that. Like, 
this is just a very old piece set. It was one of the first um, kind of uh, tertiary sub legend key sets that was ha that happened. So there we go. This is the Thesis seventy five, but with Jim K Retro Arabic. Beige keycaps are always good on green. And there you go. You can see we've got the USB. We've got the fake Limo connectors. Next job is to give this a plug in and make sure everything works. How good does that look? How good does that look? I wonder if it's related to Ship of Theseus. It may well be, it may not be, I don't know. Fit the internet connects. It does sound good. So this is the matching green cable, which works really, really well. So it's uh, it's got Cerakoted flamos in like a metallic dark green. Let's, uh, let's try and keep the, yeah, which way around does the cable want to go? I want to try and keep a loop in it. Let's go this way around, that's it. There we go. Looking good. Try and keep a, a, a loop in there so it looks good. There we go. Hmm. I, I don't have splits, the split space bars. There was no split space bar kit for this uh, this key set. So we're just using um, the shift keys upside down. Custom keyboards, precisely the opposite use of the lemma. Yeah. So. In theory, if we connect this up, it should just work, right? I think we only need to go in one side with this, so let's pop that in. We get the lovely RGBs look. Look at the RGBs glowing. Diffusing nicely through. Let's get up Switch Hitter and see if we're all working. Can you guys see that? Yes, you can. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through and press the keys on the keyboard, make sure everything lights up. All working there. So these keys on the side, they're probably not going to trigger anything, uh, but you can see they're all working because they are triggering, which is good. These keys might trigger something. Yeah, that one works. Arrow keys are all working. All working on the top row. This P, there we go. Enter key. No enter key working. Did we solder that? I'm wondering if I forgot to solder the enter key, you know. Spacebar works on both sides. Everything's working there. I'm gonna assume this is an FN key. I'm gonna assume that's FN, but yeah, that's cool. Looks like everything's working. I, I'm, I'm betting I forgot to solder the ISO NT, you know. I'm, I'm almost positive that that's what I forgot to do. Not sure about the cable connecting two halves up. Well, you can do different things with the cable connecting the two halves if you want. I just kind of like the little loop there. But you could do different things. You could have a short straight cable. You could uh, you could have the cable so it's, it's not looped, so it's just stretched out. You can do different things. Um, ultimately, the keyboard does need the two halves to be connected. So that's just the way it is. Most of the layout uh, is transparent on layer one. Stefan will not do much. Yeah, that's fine. We can we can figure it out later on. Oh, we didn't test the encoders. Do they will they work in switches? Um, not returning anything. There we go. That works. Left is the RGB control. Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. Tasty, tasty. Yeah. So the volume's working. Let's just check the RGB control. So if we do, there you go. RGBs. See so yeah, that's changing mode, that's changing brightness. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Very cool. FN and turn for mode change, nice. 
Cool. Yeah, it looks really good. Uh, okay, so we can try that. Yeah, there you go. You see it's changing modes. Let's, let's leave it on the green for now. There we go. Looks great. The RGB through the poly. Yeah, it looks so good. Like, you just catch a glimpse of it. Just as you as you sat here, like like I can see like that as I'm sat here looking at the keyboard, it looks so good, it looks so good, so good. And of course you can just push it together, and have that satisfying magnetic click, and then it works like any standard 75%. You need a moment. I completely feel that, man. I completely feel that. I am going to unplug this because we're going to do a little sound test. So bear in mind that this is built on stream. And this is uh, using Jim K keycaps, uh, ABS ones, with uh, alpaca switches. Let's see how it sounds. Let's mute the music. Let's see what you guys think from a sound perspective. If you like that marbly quality to a keyboard, this might just be for you. This is a stunning, stunning thing. Does it sound the same if we split it out? That sounds so good. That sounds so good. That sounds so good. Like, I, I know this is not a cheap keyboard. Like, I, I know if you go to the website and you take a look at this in the group buy, I know that this is not cheap. I know that it's 430 quid including VAT or 306 quid excluding VAT. But my God, did that sound good. And look, you can get the green with hot swap or solder. Look, I mean, you've just seen the green. Look how good it looks. Look how good it looks. I think the burgundy might be good. The purple as well. The Helios. Yellow is so good. Why Why is yellow keyboards? Why are yellow keyboards not more popular? I don't know. Everything just looks good. It looks good in every single color. Look at all these colors. Dude, that's a stunning color. Look at that. Look at that. I know it's expensive. I know it's 432 pounds. But, but, for th if 432 pounds sounds like that and looks like this. It's worth it. Like, what? Look how beautiful it is that look at this and these these are super tough as well like you can you can do that you can you can do this and that's perfectly fine like you can just do that guys this is this is something else like just the engineering that goes into this and the fact that the way this has been made hasn't compromised the quality of it because quite often when you make things like this and there's nothing connecting this end you get like waviness in these parts like i've seen a ton of boards that have got waviness in that kind of area and here no keyboard nunchuck absolutely absolutely i would i would have no qualms about picking this up with the cable like this and you guys are probably going to cringe i don't want them to bash against each other but like i have no qualms with doing that like that's just fine 
uh, from a weight perspective. I don't want them to scuff the anodization or anything, but yeah, you can absolutely do that with this. Right. Super, super strong, super, super reliable, super, super cool. You can't solder. Anyone can solder. Anybody can solder. If I can do it on stream, you can do it. 100%. It just takes a little bit of time, but it's a great skill to have. I really convince anyone to learn how to solder. How much does these weigh? It's not particularly heavy. Um, I couldn't I couldn't give you an exact weight unless it's on uh, 2.923 kilograms in total. So it is pretty chunky, actually. Just shy of three, kilo, three kilograms or six and a half pounds. So there you go. <clears throat> Perhaps a 400 pound keyboard isn't the best opportunity to learn. No, 100% it is. It's fine. You you cannot, you cannot, uh, Teho picks up the right half of the magnets held and I almost died. Did the magnets hold? Should we try it? Dude, there you go. There you go. It's holding. I'm not touching the bottom. Like, I can probably do it this way, actually. If I... Now it's stuck together. It's nice, a nice little... It's like a handbag. It's like a man bag. <laughs> no, the hot swap doesn't support ISO, sadly. But um, it's phenomenal. This is such a good keyboard. <clears throat> Keep doesn't need a case. Pretty good magnetic force, yeah. Um, but just four magnets, it works really well. Works really, really well. Works really, really, really well. But guys, yeah, soldering, soldering is a great skill to learn, and you can absolutely do it. You can absolutely do it. Have a snail. I hope, I hope you didn't have a heart attack the way I picked it up. But yeah, it looks so good. It works so well. The dual knobs, something cool. You can plug something in on the spare half too. Yeah, so you could use this as kind of like a USB hub and plug something in here. Like if I need to charge my mouse, I can have like the connect cable coming across to charge the mouse. Yeah, just a small heart attack. Don't worry, I promise it's not damaged when I send it back to you. <laughs> like the cable. The cable's great. It actually came with two. Uh, there is also this version, which has, um, this is black, but it has kind of like polish to match the, the knobs. So you, you, you have both options. Um, so yeah, so if I just pop the knob off, you can see we have the kind of matching. So there we go. Super, super cool. Super, super fun. And yeah, I'm super happy with it. Basically, have flaccid dongs for fingers and the dexterity of someone with Parkinson's having an epileptic fit riding a washing machine during an earthquake, and even I can solder. Yeah, anyone can solder. I, I don't care what level of keyboard you are at, you can learn how to solder 100%. Like, switches into a PCB are easy. Now, I know I've forgotten to solder the enter key, but like, that's an easy fix. Soldering is so easy, and anybody can do it. I truly believe that. Okay, right, we still need to give away. I'm so I'm so glad that you sent me the green. Like it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. I'm super happy with it. Super happy with it. Everything cheaper than those is barely cheaper, but hugely inferior. Absolutely, yeah. USB hub feature is super cool. Yeah, like I think USB hubs are probably going to be more common, more and more common as you go through. The Petracore, which is in group buy until tomorrow, that also has a USB hub through pass through as well. So yeah, I think that's going to become more and more common over time. So yeah, absolutely something to look out for. Right, okay, we still need to give away the Cycle 7 though. So whilst we built the Thesis 75, and it is the daddy of split 75s, look how good this thing looks. Like, I just can't get over how beautiful it is. Um, look at that. That should be on every desk. Um, anyway, we need to give away the Cycle cycle 8. So we have to play some more marbles, which means we have to do races 9 and 10. So we're going to do both of those now. Exclamation mark play will put you into race 9. And let's see who can win. We'll do one, both of these two races together. And we'll see who can win the Cycle 8 keyboard kit that we're giving away today. Okay, get yourselves in for the race, guys. It is Cycle 8 giveaway time. But big shout outs to uh, to Have a Snail, Andy Basler for Britain for making the DC75 um, 
It's quite possibly one of the most beautiful things I've ever had on my desk, and I'm really, really proud of it. I absolutely love it. So congratulations to them. Right, I'm going to hit start because there's 80 people in there. If you want to be in this, guys, get in there. You've got to type exclamation mark play to get in. You have to be in it to win it. We've only got two more races, so you need to get as many points as possible. Here we go through the Plinko Blanco machine. Let's see who's going to make it out first. Uh, Shiloh Lakutis and Sipula are probably in first place here. True Blaze is catching up though. Uh, Luggage is coming through two. E Bassler's there as well. Hey Asbo and Keep Signs coming around the far side. Beeperphone has taken the lead though and is storming straight through. Sipula gets stuck. So does Keep Signs. Shiloh Lakutis makes it all the way through though. So does Barrowium and Hey Asbo is there as well. As you come down this lovely wooden side, there's two different options here for the track. Shiloh Lakutis and Beeperphone down one side with Barrowium, Luggage, Hey Asbo and True Blaze down the other. Looks like Shiloh Kutis has got the lead, but only just and Barium and Beeperphone are going to beat them down the ramp there. Batowski coming through on the left-hand side. Let's see who makes it down to the next obstacle first. Looks like it's going to be Baroium. Baroium has the lead now. Quite a big, significant lead as well. Bartowski's just about in second. And Shiloh Kotis is coming through. Beeperphone's there as well. I'm in the mix as well. I can see myself not too far behind. Clacky AF is there too. Lots of people making their way down. Looks like Baroium has still got the lead. But only just Ballboy12 is coming through. And so is Beeperphone. Lots of people missing it. But Baroium is the only one that gets first through that obstacle. And they're going to make it through the second one as well. Are they going to make it through the third one without getting caught? No, they get caught, and Ball Boy and Barium and La La Bla are first, the first three through. Funny Books is there as well. It looks like Barium is going to take the win unless anyone can come around the outside. I'm there as well. I might make second or third here, maybe fourth. Looks like Funny Books missed at the end. I take third place. Barium takes first. La La Bla takes second. Captain Reed takes fourth. Haversnail takes fifth. Ball Boy takes sixth. Bartowski takes seventh. Ojem takes eighth. Conan takes ninth. And Anonymous Biker takes tenth. Congratulations, guys. Okay, we have one more race to go. Nimble uh, Machine is still right at the very back up here, look. With uh, Kimmy and Casey and Motion. And Exists is going backwards. <laughs> uh, wow, yeah. What a race that was. One more race to go before we can see who is going to win the cycle. Uh, let's see how that one goes. We're going to do this one next race right now. <clears throat> Mr. Gimp not dead yet? No. Well, you guys might make it through. Uh, I think Nitrum is just going to be out. Oh, is Nimble Machine and Exists going to make it to the end before the flames catch up? It's going to be a close thing. Looks like Junji. Oh, yeah, they all just make it. They all just make it. Okay. So, let's see who came 69th because that's always fun. 69th was Bub. Bub, congratulations. And we only had four DNFs there. So, lots of points handed out. Okay. Let's go on to the next map. We're going to go. This is the last map of today. If you want to be in this one, you need to do exclamation mark play again. And this is the last race. This is the last chance to get some points on the board to win that cycle eight. So get yourselves into the race, guys. I was at the room feeding my cats. It's only one race. It's only one race. You're fine. Okay, 85 people are in. Let's hit start. You guys are going to have to join quickly if you want to be in it. 10 seconds left. This is the last chance to win the cycle eight. Three seconds, two, one. Away we go. Let's see how this pans out through the Plinko Plonko and then around the stars. Looks like first through is Rykol. No, Trojam is first through. Rykol is second. Oscalane and Fredzillasaurus Rex and the next one's up. Lots of people all crammed together. Mr. Gimp is right at the back where he likes to be. As we come round through, weaving our way through the planets here. Long way to go, but it looks like Trojam still has the lead. Rykol is just catching up to Fredzillasaurus though. All depends on how they go through the Plinko Plonko here. This could change it all up. Trojum's going around the outside. Takes a huge lead now. Balaba takes second and Chad Music's in third as they wind their way around through the back of Earth. Coming up towards the moon. Trojum still has the lead. Chatter Music, uh, Raikoi, uh, Makmara, Pokemon Kid, Oshkelein, all there. Everyone's making it through nicely. Uh, Clacky, AF, and Borium right at the very back, though. As we start to go around Mars, we're going to loop the way around Mars. Trojum still has the lead. Balaba's in second. Chatter Music's in third. No one's making a move just yet. Lots of swishing going around the track here, though, as people build up a bit of speed. Conan's there as well. So is Jellymester. I'm right at the very back here. Look look how far back I am. Perlin Merlin bringing up the rear with Borium and Clacky AF, though. So is Gouty and Ojem there as well. As we come around the far side, Balaba is making some room on Trojum. Takes the lead. 
steals the lead as we race down all the way down to the bottom of the map here. Let's see how this is going to pan out. Balaba's coming through as we come up towards Seven's Rings there, not too far away. Trojam is there as well. Motions to Chat Music, Pokemon Kid. Everyone's starting to spread out a little bit now. Patricia Bass is there. Alex OP. Alvi in the middle. Skims and Clownfish. Jelly Master's coming down. Tang House is there too. Balaba still has the lead. A long way to go though as we start to go up towards the top of Saturn's Rings. This is going to take me ages to make this climb. Da -da 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 -da. Let's see how this pans out as we come up to the top. I think we've beaten the rush. Looks like Balab is about halfway up. There is a bit of a jump here, so there is some opportunities to die. We might see some deaths on this section here. Let's see how this goes. Let's see. Can they make the first jump? Balab goes up, down, and lands. Trojam as well. Yep. Everyone's making it so far. It's looking good as we go down through the next section. And we come right over the top of Saturn's Rings. This is a long track. This is going to take a long time to get to the end, I think. Child Music, Ryoki, Pokemon Kid, Poshnip is just overtaken. Makamara, Jelly Master's in the middle there, catching up to a few people. Clacky AF is falling down behind the back. Perlin's made up a, uh, a space as well, so is Gouty. Let's track him down. Still a long way to go. Lots of obstacles to come. Can all end in just a second here. Balls are very fast. Yeah. This racetrack is not to scale. No. Uh, but imagine that they're moving at millions of miles an hour. That's the way to look at it. Like they're just covering so much speed and so much pace. Oh no, we've got an ad break in 25 seconds and we'll still be racing after the ad break, so it'll be okay. Trojam is still a while away from Balaba. Motion is catching up though, I think. Everyone's starting to spread out a little bit more now. There is a lot of space in the track. People hitting the speed bump and some people not though, so people are overtaking here. Zakiri's X there as well. Still a long way to go. Let's see if we can catch up to the front of the pack. It shouldn't take too long. Wow, this is a hugely long track. This is going to take a long time. It's a funny angle. <laughs> is that a uh, is that a reference to um, oh, what's the film with uh, the London Gangsters? I forgot the name of it now. Snatch. That's the film I'm thinking of. Chart music died. How did chart music die? Cynic Twelve as well, falling off the track here. <gasps> oh, there's no there's no sides on the track, so you can fall off here if you're not careful. Blabber is at the next obstacle, has a huge lead. It looks like a couple of people have passed away here. Yeah, lots of people dying, falling off now. Long way to go. Oh, well, it doesn't go to the end of the solar system. It ends just here. So that's a little bit disappointing. I thought it went a lot further this track. Balaba is dead. So Magmara is now the lead. Poship is just behind. Poship is down. An anonymous biker is in second. Looks like anonymous. Looks like Makamara is gonna take finish. Yes, anonymous biker takes second. The luggage takes third. Just do it or takes fourth. Motion one takes fifth. Pokemon Kid takes sixth. La La Bla takes seventh. Rue. Oh no, Shyla Kutis, Pre-owned Amoeba, and Rue take eighth, ninth, and tenth. Congratulations, guys. That is the race over and done with. So we've done all ten races. There is gonna be a winner. It actually ends at Uranus. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't going to say that, but you did, so I can correct it. It's fine. Um, what an incredible comeback to finish fourth. Yeah, you were miles away. Come on, top ten just once. Don't you dare. Taking a survivor as a win. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's see who came 69th, because that's always fun. It wasn't a 69th, because too many people died. Lots of people died. So we're going to finish the Grand Prix. Okay, so for no prize whatsoever, in third place, we have... Just BMT. Congratulations. You don't win a prize today, but you do have bragging rights of coming third place across all of this. Uh, did we uh, did we did we hit the uh, the goal? I don't think we did the subs goal. So second prize second place doesn't get a prize either. But in second place we have Rufus McFloofus. Congratulations for your second prize today. You are in second place, so you don't quite win anything, but congratulations. Let's see who the grand prize winner is today and who's going to take home that lovely Cycle 8. It is ZC Knob. So congratulations, ZC. You are the winner. Please reach out to a moderator, provide your full name, address, all your shipping details, including your email and your phone number. And congratulations. We will get that shipped out to you. Uh, this week. So you are the proud winner of the Cycle 8. It will be built unless you ask for us to desolder it, uh, which will take a few days longer. But yeah, you can check out last week's build stream to have a look at that. So congratulations. Well done. You are our winner today. Let's have a look at the final results. So 
First place with 801 points. Rufus came second with 680 points. Just BMT was third with 655. And then it drops off massively. Framed, Anamushki, Makamara, Ojem, Cynic12, Exists, and Ebastler ran out of top 10. Let's see who... Jellymaster is our first moderator. He comes in 29th. Might be our only moderator, actually. I came in 56th. Not a bad position overall. Pokemon Kid only came, only, only only had three races and still was just behind me. Like look at look at the number of races. Like uh, if you look at the number of races, ZC was only in three, but he managed to rack up those points because he had a win. So he was only in three. Just BMT was only in two and got all of those points. Crazy, 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 crazy. You have to be in it to win it. That just shows you. 69th place goes to uh, C. Trepidalak with uh, with one race entry and 37 points. The last person to score any points was Magic Turtle. And we had quite a few people who scored no points. Crucified Pooh, Who's Bunny Hop, Citron Caramel, Davy Dav. Five races with no points. That's crazy. WFXD, nine races with no points. Lane 20 with 10 races and no points. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Just how this works. Lots of people with no points here. Lots of people with absolutely no points. Another Captain Mal, 10 races, no points. Wow. Jan the Frab just two races. Wow. Look at all these people with no points. Wow. Such a sad time. But there we go. That is the overall result after 10 races. We had a total of 198 players across them. 104th F. 42nd where it's at. <laughs> so there we go. I think they won the only the race, only two finished. That one gave a ton of points. It does. That's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Yeah. Hackings. 34th. It's okay. Spain won Wimbledon and Europe. Yeah. Spain had a good day today. Spain had a good day today. So that is the race over and done with. Congratulations. Um, that's Marbles finished with. So there we go. So just to recap, guys, we have done a few things today. We've talked about PT News. We've talked about LP19, the new profile from GMK, which we, we showed earlier on on the stream. We've built a Theseus 75. We've given away a Cycle 8. Uh, we've talked about the website. We've talked about coffee. We've talked about a 1,001 different things. Uh, Gemma won a t-shirt for asking a really good question about who would I allow to sell me if I was a chair and celebrities. We have one final thing to do before we end the stream, and that is time to look at some pogs. So for those of you who don't know, pogs are milk caps that were around in the... Uh, uh, in the 90s here in the UK and I now have a pog spreadsheet so we can track who's what's happening on the pogs so let me share this with you this is the pog tracking website so we have 25 pogs unique we have 10 duplicates we have five unique slammers and we have two duplicate slammers we need 35 pogs out of 60 to finish the collection we're going to open a couple of packets in a moment we've opened seven packets so far we've got 26 packets remaining we've opened 21 percent of the packets but we have 41 percent of the caps collected so we're going to fill this out in a second but i'm going to show you what we've got first of all pog time yeah not finished the stream just yet we're going to open up two packets of the pogs today and we're going to see if we can get any additional pogs in the collection so this is our pile of pogs that we've collected this is what we've got yeses against these are the slammers <laughs> one thing keep nerds do is make a spreadsheet yeah those are the slammers and then this is our duplicates pile so we'll see if anything needs to go in the duplicates pile put that to one side let's open these up and let's see what we get Officially the biggest loser. Nah, man. Don't worry about it. More more chances next time. This is awesome. Hasn't seen Pogs in forever. Yeah, I I, I, I bought a full tub of, uh, of uh, I think it was 35 packs in it. So we're trying to get the whole collection. So as you can see, I've been crossing them off on here, but I now have a spreadsheet. So we have a, a new, no, we have a duplicate slammer. Uh, seven is a duplicate slammer. We already have that one. So that's going to go into, uh, into that. So it goes into our duplicate pile. And I'm going to just quickly flick onto here. So I can now update this slammer seven. We actually have two of them. Oh, wrong keyboard. I can't type on it. It's not plugged in. There we go. So that's now updated. Okay. Let's see what actual pogs we've got in today's collection. We got 37 which is a new one that's called prop we haven't had that one before but that's a brand new one so we're going to cross out 37 and let's add that on to the spreadsheet 37 now becomes a yes and we have one of it there we go 
nice and easy. So that's going to go into our keep pile. And what we're going to do is the uh, the ones that are duplicates, these are going to start to make their way into SPC packets soon. POG33, I think we already have this one. Yeah, POG33 we already have. So that's another duplicate for it. Uh, so you can't type on that keyboard, it's not plugged in. So I'm going to put that into the duplicates pile. This is a new one, I believe. Series 1, uh, number 56. So let's add that to the tracker. 56. Where's 56? 56 pimp skull. That now becomes a yes. And we add a one in. That goes into our current pile. Uh, and then we have Misfit Mob number 11. Now, this is a brand new one as well. This is Trench. So we have this one too. Uh, sorry, just BMT says, do the cheesecake switches allow LED shine through? It looks like there may be a gap. Yeah, so there's a gap that you can see the LED through uh, if you put the LEDs into it. So yeah, that, they will work, but it won't look great. Um, they're not really designed for it. So yeah. So this is a brand new one, Trench. This is uh, this is number 11. So let's cross this out on here. I like to keep both paper copies and uh, normal copies and, and the uh, spreadsheet copy. We're going to come up onto here and we're going to go to 11 and we're going to mark that as a yes. And we're going to add a one in there because we've got one of them. Okay, and then the last one in this particular packet is number two, which is called Heavy Hank, and this is a new one as well. That's kind of an interesting one. It looks like a, looks like a character um, from, uh, from a certain movie. I probably shouldn't mention it. So we're going to add that. That's number two. That's Heavy Hank. Cross that off the list. And let's put that onto the spreadsheet. So that now becomes a yes, and that becomes a one. Okay, so that's one packet done. We have some, some newbies in there. Let's open up the second packet and see what we get from this one. They illuminate pretty well. Nice, okay, yeah, okay. I, I didn't think they look great, but maybe they do. I think they're called turbo chewing gums. Shinies, yeah. Chewing gums and some gums with cars inside. I don't remember that. I don't remember that. Okay, let's take a look and see what we've got in this one. So. This is a new slammer. This is Big Slam. This is number six. That's a brand new one. So let's add that to the pile and tick off the slammers. The slammers are here. So we've now got, we've got almost all the slammers. We're doing quite, pretty well on this front. So there we go. And then let's take a look at the keycap. Uh, the, not the keycaps, uh, the, the, <laughs> the pogs themselves. This is number 19. I think this is another new one as well. I don't recognize this one. That is called Speaker. Oh, I see. Yeah, he's stood in front of a speaker rocking out. Like I thought he was holding something back, like Spider-Man with the train. But he's stood in front of a speaker rocking out. That's pretty cool. So that is 19. Let's add that to the sheet. 19 is there. There we go. Put that into the pile. Uh, next up, we have Pog City, which is number 27. I think this is another new one as well. That's quite cool. Uh, oh no, we already have Pog City. We already have Pog City, so that is going to go... I don't recognise it, but apparently we already have it. 27, Pog City. Yeah, okay, so we do already have that one. Uh, so we're going to update that, and we now have two of Pog City. Nice and simple. Okay, next up, we have got number five. Number five is Jadan. We already have that, so that's another duplicate. I'm not doing so well on this one. I'm just going to update Jadan to say we have another duplicate. Okay. Next up, we have number 41. I think that's a new one. I think that's a new one. Very similar to some other ones. That's called Five Star. That is new. Add that to the spreadsheet. There we go. And then this is another new one, which is number 16. Which is called Girlfriend. Oh, come on. Camera, please focus. That's called Girlfriend. So, there we go. Uh, it's a 16 cross Girlfriend off. Okay. And then add that to the tracker. Okay, so what does that do for the overall POG numbers? Well, right now, that means that we have 32 POGs with 13 duplicates. Uh, we have six unique slammers out of 10 and three duplicate slammers. We need a further 28 pogs. So we've got over 50% now. We've got 53.33%. We've got 46% needed. We've opened nine packets. We've got 24 packets left. So a quarter of the way through opening the packets, we've got half of the 
half of the pogs. But I suspect the duplicate rate is going to multiply significantly as we start to get through. So we'll see how that works. But hopefully, once we've opened all of the packets up, we will have the full collection. Um, I'll be disappointed if we don't make it. So yeah. So there we go. That's the pogs done. That's the tracker updated. Uh, I might pull a bit more of a dashboard onto this spreadsheet and maybe we can make this section like have some graphs or something. I don't know. I'll, I'll try and figure it out. Uh, maybe I can put some more stats on there, like chances of like maybe a probability of making it out of all the packets. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, okay, so thank you very much for watching, guys. That is the end of the stream. Uh, we have given away a Cycle 8. We have built this beautiful, beautiful Theseus uh, 75, which I'm thoroughly, thoroughly happy with. Um, I'm going to go home now and get some sleep because it is half past midnight nearly. By the time I get home, it's going to be 1 o'clock. So I have to be back here by between half past 7 and 8 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah, might have to tell Mel I'm going to be late to, to work in the morning and not get in until 9. We'll see. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm going to head home now. Um, get some sleep and I'm sorry it's been such a long stream but it's been really good fun having you guys so take care and I'll see you again soon have a great rest of your weekend guys much love bye bye